Good evening, one and all. Welcome to the stream once again. Nice to have you guys in. Quite a few in already, just about coming up to 100 now. Uh, it won't be a long one tonight. I know I say that every week, but I've got three this weekend. Uh, you must have seen me advertise it now. Brian Flowers will be here at 4.30 Sunday afternoon, and then we do the regular stream a little bit later on. I'm going to start saying hi to everybody in a minute. Um, a new feature that I started last Sunday that seemed to be quite a bit of fun and quite a lot of people had it. We had to, uh, liked it. We had some technical problems, but right at the end, I put a link out and I let anybody who wanted to come into the stream come in and we had all these faces up on screen. It was great, actually. Um, but I found out there are restrictions with this software. The package I'm on, I can have up to 10 people in the stream. I don't know if that's nine and me or me and 10 people. So what I'm, I'm going to try again on Sunday night uh, when I do, uh, not the one with Brian, the Sunday evening stream. Uh, the last 10 minutes, I'll just put the link out there. Anybody who wants to come in on the stream and give us a wave and say hi can come in. It was actually quite a lot. It was quite a lot of fun last week. And what was great about it, I, you know, I could see people uh, who have seen on the stream every week. I, I don't know what they look like. And I could see them all there. And yeah, it was pretty good. So if you if you want to come in on the end of the stream, like last Sunday, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and look at that. A uh, little bit long last last Sunday, four hours, 20 minutes. Uh, but um, yeah, but we'll do, we'll do that on Sunday and we'll see how that goes. Right. Uh, who's first in? Hey then, how are you doing? Uh, Shinrana, yeah, good to have you in, mate. Um, yeah, I, uh, Shin and I actually spoke this week uh, on the phone. That was quite good. Uh, so, yeah, good to speak to you, Shin. Um, Dutch Frank, as always. James Casey, how are you doing? Uh, I've seen you in a few uh, streams, leaving comments around, James. That's good to get about. Um, let's have a look. Uh, Crypto Chris Card, how are you doing? Uh, in the house, yeah, wearing the old cool shades there. Donald Trump, uh, good evening, sir. Yeah, uh, the local president in the house. Uh, Martin Ryder, how are you? Uh, we'll say hi to Real Rennie again. Is it Rennie or Rennie? I think it's Rennie, isn't it? Real Rennie. Good evening, Peter and everybody. Greetings from a hotel room in Gothenburg. Oh, wow. You on, is it a business trip or you're uh, up to no good there? Uh, Natural in the buff vampire lady. You and Ed Sweeney should be mates. We are. We are. I spoke to Ed today. Um, what did we speak about today? Um, duh, 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 duh. I can't remember. But I... I there are certain um, people on YouTube who've got channels. I talk to very frequently. I speak I speak to Brian very frequently. I speak to Ed Sweeney very frequently. I speak to Bangkok Pat quite often. I speak to Trevor and Patty quite often. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, we're, we all have contact. Some some I don't know, obviously. Uh, Boohoo, how, how are you doing? Good to see you. Leeds, uh, Stephen Hill, Easy Tigers, how are we all doing, etc. Yeah, we'll change this background picture later on. I've got some nice ones lined up for you. Um, do you know what I forgot to do today? I forgot to do because my shower's leaking in the house. You know, I came down yesterday and the utility room was flooded, and I took the ceiling apart and I put the pipe back together and I got my daughter to put the shower on while I was underneath and it was dry. I thought, great, I've repaired it, don't have to pay out. I've just had a shower, came down, and there was a puddle of water, so that's peed me off a little bit. So I forgot to actually put the uh currency rates up tonight, so there's no currency rates. So if you want to know what the currency is, you'll, you'll have to go and look it up yourself tonight. Uh, that's the first time I've ever forgot it. Really weird. Right. Uh, Ryan Seeger, how are you doing? Asef Shaikh, how, nice to see you in. You always leave nice comments on the stories. Uh, John Miles, hello, Peter. Looking forward to the stream. Glad it's Friday. Yeah, we'll have a beer in a bit. Uh, not, not too early because I tend to get carried away when I have a beer. I seem, you know, sometimes I go off and I watch other people's streams just to see if anybody's leaving any sneaky comments in. And uh, a couple of, not in a nasty way, a couple of people said, uh, you know, they'll watch uh, this stream with me and it starts off all sensible, but the later it goes on, the wilder it gets because I tend to have a bit too much to drink. So I don't want to start too early. Uh, John, how are you doing in Northampton? Uh, is it, Oh, no, sorry, Kev123456. You're in Northampton. John uh, Millini, is it? Hello, Peter, looking forward. Uh, oh, I've read that one already. Uh, World Traveller Forever. Hello, Peter and everyone. Let's get the show started. Yeah. Um, STE Bill Billable, how you doing? Um, Martin Blunston, what are you saying? Good evening, Peter and chat. Not going to be a long one tonight. You got a busy weekend. Yeah, you know, I, you know what, guys, I do enjoy the the doing this. It's better than watching TV, and I like talking to you guys. It's great with a beer and everything. And um, but you know, if I finish too late, I can't get anything done. You know, there's a few things I like to tidy up, finish not tidy up, but finish up before I do. Uh, Sean T, hi, uh, glad to be back. Have you just where have you been? Have you just come back from Thailand? Um, how many we got in now? I'll get some nearly 200. We'll start talking a little bit about Thailand in a bit. What's going on? There isn't a lot of news about at the moment. There's a few bits and pieces that you've probably heard about already. If you haven't, then I'll tell you about them very, very briefly. 
Uh, Ben Dover, good evening. I'm watching the show. Yeah, good to have you in. Paul Shackleton, hello, handsome man. Oh, you're, you're on my Christmas card list. Uh, my favourite time of the week. Well, you got three this week, Paul, if you're into them. Uh, this one, 4.30pm with Brian Flowers. Uh, he's, it's not going to be a regular stream at 4.30. I'm just going to bring Brian in. We're going to have a chat. We're probably going to talk a lot about trolls and armchair critics because I know Brian gets a lot of that. He, he he talks a lot about business in Patreon. I watched his last stream and, he, and he's very business orientated. But when he's on somebody else's stream, he doesn't really like to talk about um, business. He likes to talk about other things and and uh, trolls are one of his hit one of his passions as it were uh, so we might have a little chat about that but it'll be it won't be a regular stream brian will come in i'll have a chat with brian for an hour or so and then i'll go off and i'll come back at eight o'clock and we'll do we'll do the regular one uh right rich in for angland how are you doing uh did, uh tilt cool cool intro music yeah I, I like i like that music till it's actually um it's some it's youtube music uh, look at that, Marky Mark, straight in. Thank you, uh, Mark, Marky Mark, you're very generous. The countdown is on, only six weeks to go. I keep thinking that you're live in Thailand with the background. I'm looking forward to the video of your surrounding your final stream from England. Yeah, uh, me too, Mark, and thanks for that super chat. Um, I'm still trying to decide what to do. Um, hi to PA Comanche, another week closer to travel. Yep, absolutely. Um, let me just go back to some I haven't read. Um I'm still trying to decide what to do about the live streams because when I went out there for three weeks in December and it turned out being five weeks, I was waking up at four o'clock in the morning so that I could do the stream at this 9 p.m. Uh, in the UK. So you guys, it'd, it'd be a regular, you wouldn't have to sort of think, well, what time is he on? Uh, and my first stream in that hotel room in Bangkok, I, it was a real big one, nearly a thousand people in the stream. But that's understandable. People wanted to know what was going on. That was the, uh, the, the dark days, as it were. Uh, and I'm, I'm still trying to think what would be convenient for me and it wouldn't, um, you know, you guys will still come in. And I think um, because it's eight now, what time is that in Thailand? Eight o'clock. So there's six hours, a, will be seven hours ahead in, by the time I go. So eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, one, two, three. See, it's three in the morning, isn't it, in Thailand? I think what I'm going to have to do while I'm away, because I'm going to be away for at least two months and I'm, all, I'm now thinking about three months because there's bad news my the people who are going to buy my house have pulled out they can't get the mortgage now because the interest rates have gone up we've now put it on multi-agency so i don't need to be here um i'm probably going to stay out there till from october till january and um what i'm going to have to do i think i'm going to move the streams to a sunday afternoon for me around four so that you catch it around nine o'clock on a sunday night um so something like that because there's no point in doing it on a weekday like a friday uh, uh, if I do it at four, what's that in Thailand? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, hang on, that would work out, wouldn't it? Friday. Oh, no, it's me who's going to be six hours, at seven hours ahead. So, yeah, I, I'll have a think about it anyway. Right, Cam the Cook, how are you doing? Simon Mays, Richard McWilliam. Do you suggest bringing your own phone or purchasing one in Thailand? Um, take your own, buy a SIM card at the airport. I mean, uh, how many times have you lost a phone? You know, people say to me, I don't want to take, I've just, uh, I've just bought a new phone. People say to me, oh, be careful. Don't take your own phone. You'll lose it. But think about it. How many times have you lost a phone? Um, no, because you just waste time trying to find a phone, uh, going shopping for a phone in Thailand. Um, and a lot of the phones that you don't buy from proper phone shops like MBK Center, they look exactly the same, but the software sometimes is, is copy software. And I went to look at, when I was buying, looking at phones a couple of years ago, when I was there with my wife, I was looking at some phones in the MBK center on the, I think it's fourth floor. And uh, they all look great. But when you play with them and start using the apps and that, they're kind of sluggish and the software isn't right. So take your own. You've got all your information. Just uh, when you get to the airport, buy a SIM card. They'll put your SIM card. They'll give you it back. Put it in. Uh, what I do, top tip, if you take your SIM card out, you know those sandwich bag bags, the plastic sandwich bags are about that size. Well, they're all sizes, but that size. I put my SIM card in that because it's a tiny little thing. It's easy to lose in a bag. If you put it in a plastic sandwich bag, then you'll find it easy. Uh, but no, take take your own phone. Uh, Michael DiCaprio. Hi, Peter from Swansea. How are you doing, Michael? Good to have you in. Uh, natural in the buff. I said you and... Oh, okay. Right. What did you say? I'm getting told complaints now. I said you and Ed should mate. Oh, not be mates. Yeah, no, it's not a very nice thought, actually. A bit hairy uh, uh, for me. Right. Uh, Neil McFacqua. Good, good evening, Peter from a back central Queensland. Yeah. Hi, Neil. Um, yeah, JB, how are you doing? Uh, you're saying hi, Peter and regulars. Great to see you. Let's back the truck up and admit we're all adults here. So let's cut the jibber jabber and talk about the birds and the bees. Yeah, we'll do that later on. We'll do the serious stuff first. Um, <clears throat> okay, Tony Foley, hi, how are you doing? Uh, Ditch, uh, David Heidelberg, uh, lookalike Russell. That's a name and a half, isn't it? 
Evening, Peter and everyone. Hi, David. Uh, thanks for sending your phone number in the other day. I might, I might give you a little ring one afternoon. Uh, uh, oh, you've changed, you've changed your username, Randy. Randy Mainholt. For, yeah, because you've got rid of the plane now, haven't you? So uh, it's, uh, I know, I know it's Randy, obviously, because I've spoken to you on the phone uh, there in America. We've had some good, couple of good chats. Uh, but good to see your your real name up there, Cashier. Hello, uh, hello, regular chat bros. Yeah, John Milan is it? Hello, Peter and Phuket News. It says Thailand will be extending to. I'll talk about that in a minute. A lot of people has already done it. I, I'm going to do it very, very briefly. Just finish off saying hi to everyone, and then I'll talk about a few things that's happening in Thailand. Not much news at the moment. Right. Okay. Uh, Deep the trucker. How you doing? UK forty. Okay, you've looked it up. Forty two twenty six. For me, Deke, as long as it stays 40 and above, I'm fine. <clears throat> when I was there with my wife three years ago, it was 36 baht to the pound. That was terrible. You give 100 pound, you get 3,600 baht. Uh, and and it's not cheap now, is it? Do you remember uh, Trevor mentioned in one of his videos, he was so shocked at the prices in Bangkok. It, it is expensive. Um, okay, Sean says, been working at sea, internet rubbish. Okay, yeah, I hear you. Uh, ben Edits, how you doing? Uh, Motel, Pete and Flowers, looking forward to it. Uh, oh, you've got two up there. You've got P.A. Comanche and, and Randy. You're, a, you're, you're, you're doing two tonight there. There you go. Uh, Barry Curran, hi from, uh, is that, where is that? Uh, Fer, Fern, Ma I can't read that. Oh, heading to Patia, November, the countdown is on. Yeah, well, I, I'm going the first week of, of October, and I've, I've already said now I'm, I'm probably going to stay out there. Well, I'm going to stay at least two months, maybe three months. So uh, looking forward to that. Uh, M.O.H. Money Over Honeys, uh, Trolls and his passion. Lester Paul has detox. Ah, Paul, let me put that up. I've got it. I'm going to come clean with you guys. Uh, has detox started yet? Okay. Last uh, Friday, no, last Sunday, I said I was going to go for it. I was going to stop drinking, go on a diet for six weeks. I'm going to Thailand. When I arrive, I'll be a, a lean, mean fighting machine, as it were. I fell down at the first hurdle, guys. I lasted one day without a beer, sitting there watching Elvis on, net uh, was it Elvis? I think it's some film on Netflix. And uh, I was, had them in the fridge and I fell down. So I'm not going to worry about it. I've got the wrong state of mind with everything that's going on around me at the moment, with my family and the selling of the house and splitting up with my wife and everything. It's not, um, it's not really the right kind of mood to try something like losing a lot of weight or stopping drinking. It's uh, you've got to be in the right frame of mind. Maybe I, well, I won't stop drinking in Thailand. Maybe when I get back, uh, right. Um, court, cool. Corporate McMahon, yeah, Friday in Thailand, Van Peter. I booked for November. I'm so happy again after two years. You can't believe it. Yeah, I, I do believe it. Uh, Paul Hoskins is um, is the Monga Minute coming on? Yeah, we got a new. Well, there is a Monga Minute tonight, Paul, and it it's slightly over a minute tonight. Right, uh, uh, Paul. Just um, I was watching you. Which stream did I see you? And I, I was uh, the comments were coming, and you left a comment. I thought that's a very sensible question for, for Paul Hoskins. He doesn't normally leave questions like that. I'm, who was it? I think it was Brian. I was watching Brian Flowers' channel. I was reading some of the comments, and you came on. And uh, was it? Was, did you leave a comment about the four stages of mongering? And, and Brian was telling you about the platinum level. <laughs> he, does, he he loves it, doesn't he, Brian? Right, Stephen Hills. Okay, coming to Thailand for the first time in December. Have high arcs and feet, and have seventy percent mobility with it. Oh, that's a serious one. Okay, let me let me answer it. Right, I'm coming to Thailand for the first time in December. I've high arcs, feet and have 70% mobility. Uh, no, not really. Uh, what you have to remember, you're not in a wheelchair, obviously, because it's not geared up, it's not geared up for wheelchairs. That's a fact. The, the What you've got to know is in, um, especially in Bangkok, the pavement is very uneven. It's not like where you live. You know, it's very, very uneven. So you just take it slow. Uh, but no, it shouldn't be a problem. Just take it easy, take it slow. And, uh, you know, you're not in a rush, are you really? Uh, Cy London, how are you doing? Corporate Mahan, is it? Uh, Mike uh, said all the restaurants in Thailand are gone. Is that true? So no masks. Uh, the, the Thais still very much want to wear the masks, but they're getting, I've be, I seen on the Tiger the other day that they're getting a little bit more relaxed about it. There's certain situations you should really put your mask on for the Thais because we don't mind not wearing a mask so much. But an example, there was a guy, I was reading the PC, he was going around without a mask on and he got into an elevator and all the Thais in the elevator turned their backs on him. They all you know, they're all, you know, when you get in an elevator, everyone's facing you, aren't they? And he got in and they, they all turned around and faced the walls. You know, I mean, that, that's kind of giving you a, a strong signal, isn't it? Um, right. OK, so before uh, let, near, near, creeping up to 300, let's wait till we get to 300 before we talk about the serious Thailand stuff. Uh, Clive, how are you doing? Are you coming in again on Sunday? That was good, wasn't it? That All the little faces at the end there. 
Um, yeah, we'll do that again on Sunday. Uh, Brian Street, 16, day, 16 days till I meet my girlfriend. Wow, meet you nearly there. Two weeks, Brian. I think Damon will be coming back about then. Um, okay, Taxi to Lie. Hi, Peter. We have a good troll bashing crew in the stream. Okay, good. Yeah, watch out for those trolls, guys. What you want to do, right, if you, if you get any trolls leave shitty comments, just uh, give me a bit of support, you know, jump on them and, and instead of me blocking them, just call them out sort of thing, you know. Right, Michael, how you doing? Uh, Nick T, evening Mongolians. <laughs> I like that. Put that up there, look. Evening Mongolians. Had in my mind it was 9 p.m., almost missed one hour. Let me just say hi um, to a new member, um, this guy here. Who is he? Uh, Mike B8134. I don't know if you're in the stream, Michael. You'll watch this later. Uh, you've obviously just joined as a member. Thank you very much, and uh, good to have you on board. Okay. Right, uh, Javier Lopez, I'm so ready for the Monga Minute. Bring it on, mate. I don't know if it's a great one tonight because not everyone can be a great one. Uh, it's like the stories, you know, people say to me about the stories, um, you know, they'll write in and say, oh, I didn't really like the stories this week. They weren't that great. You know, they can't all be uh, the best story they've ever had. Sometimes people write to me and say, that was one of the best stories you've ever read out since I've been watching your channel. Other weeks, people say, yeah, I wasn't keen on the stories this week. I'm not complaining, but they weren't great. Uh, and, and I know where they're coming from because, uh, hi, Bobby. Bob and Jir in London there. How you doing? Uh, you're awake now, are you? You're, it, it, Bob stays up all night and he, he's, uh, I won't tell you what he does, but let's just say there's a lot of young ladies in Thailand on their phones. Uh, Bob normally gets up about seven o'clock at night. That's his morning. Right. Uh, where are we? Dutch Frank. Uh Javier Lopez, I'm so ready for the Monga Minute. Yeah, bring it on. Uh, Black Bolt, how are you doing? I've actually forgot what I was just talking about before I mentioned Bob there. What was I on about? Um, oh, the stories, yeah. So they can't all be um, they can't all be the best story. But, I, you know, often people will say to me, uh, out of all the stories you've read out, because I've probably got close to a 1,000 stories. If you think about it, three years, every Saturday, minimum of two, sometimes three, four, up to eight. I think the six, is to, the six stories tomorrow. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you that the, my favorite story, my, before last week, my favorite story, a few, well, there's a few I've got. I don't want to start. You won't remember them all, right? But there's about five I like that really stand out. One of them I really like was the one about um, Liam and, uh, or is it Liam and Oi, the girl who was working in Phuket for eight years and Liam didn't have a clue. He just met her on uh, Thai Friendly or something like that. Uh, and he didn't know. And he found out she was a freelancer for eight years. And he was like, Christ, you know. But they worked it out. And I, I like that story. That was quite positive. Uh, but the, you know that story I put out last week about Lek? It's, um, I put a link in the description. It, it's one of my favorite stories. And uh, I'll tell you why. I think it's really because a bar girl has actually told the story. She's been really honest, really frank. And she gives a lot of detail about customers they like, customers they don't like, how she ended up coming down from the village. That upload has had just under 32,000 viewings in seven days. That's incredible. Um, most of the stories after seven days, they'll have maybe 10,000 viewings. Uh, after maybe a month or two, that, that'll creep up to maybe 15, 18, depending on what the thumbnail looks like. But you know, like I say, it was only last uh, Saturday I released that video, Lek. Uh, it's called it's called um, Patty of Thailand, uh, a, a bar girl story. And, and you've probably listened to it if you if you watch a lot of the stories, but that that's probably really my favourite story of all time, and it's doing extremely well. And if you haven't seen it, I've put a link in the description in this live stream tonight. Go off and watch it. It's a, it's a brilliant, absolutely. She tells the story brilliantly, uh, and then her husband comes in at the end, and he tells you his emotions, how he was feeling. Bearing in mind she's working in Patty, you know, but very very good. Okay, um, right, Black Bolt, your your buyers bailed out. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, do you know what pissed me off about that Black Bolt? It wasn't that the buyers bailed out, that they dropped out. Um, they didn't tell anyone, right? They they probably knew three weeks ago. Um, we Because I did all my solicitor stuff and all that, and I told the estate agent, and they phoned them up and said, hey, what's happening with your solicitors? Are you up to speed? Because Peter's done his. And they said, oh, no, we can't get a mortgage now. Well, they didn't just know at that point, did they? I mean, people are so inconsiderate, but it will sell. It will sell. Um Right, Bob J. Let's see what you're saying. I'm booking my fl flight tickets to Bangkok on Monday. Yep. And uh, with regards to your visa, Bob, uh, remember what I said. It's probably better to get the extension in Patu. It's a lot easier. Right. Let's before I say hi to anybody else. Oh, that was a slurping half. Right. Let's let me just really talk quickly about a few things that are gone in Thailand. There's not a lot of news out there, guys. Before I do, I want to give a shout out to Anthony Logia. I probably pronounced your last name wrong, Anthony, but uh, big fan of this channel. 
Uh, leaves a lot of comments on the stories. Had a few emails of him. So uh, again, Anthony Logia, apologies if, if the name's wrong, but there's your shout out. I'm also going to give a shout out to Noel up there in Birmingham, listening, but unfortunately not able to watch. Uh, how you do, know? Sorry, I haven't answered all your emails. I just, I answer as many as I can. Sometimes some of them slip through the net. Uh, and again, uh, thank you to Mike B813 for becoming a member. And finally, before we get into any news, I've got to say a big happy birthday to Baldy out there. Yeah, the handsome man himself, Frankel, the moderator. Uh, he's in the background there tonight. It's his birthday tomorrow. He's gone out for a Chinese buffet meal. Eat all you can eat. They'll ban him when he's been there tomorrow because he, he likes his food, does Frankel. But ha seriously, Frankel, happy birthday to you. And uh, I hope you have a good meal tomorrow. Right, let's let's see what's going on. Right, so you, you must have heard from other people's channels now that the... Um, They've approved is uh, the 45 day visa. Okay, I'll just read this. This is from the Examiner, uh, an online periodical that I read called the Examiner. It says so the the CC uh, the CCSA has approved the visa exemption period. So I always say that, that it's a visa exemption. It's not a visa stamp um, for foreign tourists. For, they're going to take it from 30 days to 45 days, but that's only from October. Guess who goes in October? Uh, October 22 to March 23. So it's only October, November, December, January, February, March, six months, right? So uh, let me read it without interrupting, then we'll talk about it. The CCSA has approved the visa exemption period extension for foreign tourists from 30 days to 45 days from October 2022 to March 2023 to potentially boost the tourism industry. The extension will be effective from October the 1st, 2022 to March 31st, 2023 in order to attract more international arrivals uh, to revive the domestic economy after the COVID-19 financial hardship, as well as generate income from tourists and expats. So basically what it is, it's a promotion, isn't it? What they're saying is, right, for six months, let's let these guys come in. Um, you know, they, some of them will want to stay five weeks and six weeks. Let's let's give them 45 days. That, that uh, They've worked out that tourists spend on average 500 baht a day. I don't know where they got that figure from because I spend a lot more than that. Uh, but that's that's what it is. So from the 1st of October, if you land in Bangkok, you'll automatically get a 45-day uh, stamp, uh, and that will last till March. So that's good news. A uh, little bit of bad news is that the the bars, this doesn't affect me because I don't want to stay till 4 in the morning, but they haven't, they've not yet approved the 4 a.m. closure. The CCSA leaves entertainment venues in limbo over the 4 a.m. closing. Hotels in Carlson Road in Bangkok were ready to offer special hotel room rates of 500 baht per night to guess if the government extended closing time until 4 a.m. Unfortunately, no decision has been made and it's left bar, restaurant and hotel owners in limbo. The tourism and sports minister revealed last week that he would seek approval from the CCSA to extend the closing time of entertainment venues from 2 a.m. till 4 a.m. And that's from the Tiger. So it hasn't gone ahead yet. So if you're one of those guys who's heading out to Thailand and you want to party all night, as they say, uh, I've got a feeling in Pattaya or Pattaya, for those who like to say it, I've got a feeling you can get a, there's a lot of places to drink after 2 a.m. Do you know what I mean? But the official line on it is four o'clock is not yet there. Um, OK, here's something interesting. Um, now, this is a good kind of uh, not a warning. This is if you're going out to Thailand for the first time and, you know, you've watched all the videos, 20 things not to do in Thailand, 10 things not to do. We've all made them um, this. You know, this is a, a Thai perspective on us. Uh, and I got this from the Tiger as well today, uh, a little article. Let me read this out because I found this extremely um, interesting. I, ho I hope you will do as well. Um, it's not too long. It's quite short, actually. Uh, the, the Land of Smiles, capital city, attracted 23 million visitors, more than any of the globe's favourite other destinations, including Paris, London and Singapore. But have you ever wondered what the locals think of millions of Farangs who visit the country? Foreign travellers to Bangkok do a lot of pointing at people or things with their feet locals have observed. One Bangkok lady, Mandy It Hai Kawan, I probably said that wrong, uh, revealed it's offensive to Thai people to signal or point at things with one's feet. When you take public transportation, for example, you just don't put your feet up. It's common in the West, but in Thailand, it's a big no-no. Another observation trait is that tourists don't care much for wearing clothes when visiting temples. One local called G noted that foreigners don't wear the appropriate clo clothing when visiting temples. Another foreigner stereotype is eating at expensive or popular restaurants instead of dining at places where locals like to go. A Bangkok taxi driver, Nakhon Ratchapong, admitted locals prefer 
eating at roadside restaurants and eateries than in mo and in malls. Foreigners are, are rarely respectful of spirit houses. Spirit houses are common in many Asian cities. They are everywhere in Bangkok. Spirit houses look like miniature temples or houses. Sometimes foreigners don't know. They sit next to them, and some even use a shrine as, an, as a table to eat their meal on. Uh, and the final popular observation made by locals is foreigners, they underestimate how dangerous the roads are in Bangkok with the 100,000 deaths. Uh, and it's recommended foreigners should go on MRT and BTS to get around rather than using motorbike taxis and tuk-tuks. Okay, so a little bit longer there, but I just thought you'd find that interesting. Okay, so, uh, right, Simon Mays, uh, two pounds super chat. Get get yourself a Saint Etienne, Pete. I will do. I've got some here. I'm going to crack one open in a minute. Um, over 300 in now. Good to have you in, guys. Um, one last little bit of news. This is very, very short, but this is important. Um, I don't know if you read the story about the 22-year-old Dutch guy, young guy, uh, six-pack, all muscles, handsome man, all that sort of thing. He went to cold PP, did a very, very stupid thing, and he's probably going to be blacklisted and jailed in Thailand. 22 years of age. He probably didn't think anything of it. He made a big mistake. Um, you could say it's a silly mistake. You could say it's a big mistake. Let me just read out this short article. A Dutch tourist arrested and facing jail time after killing endangered fish on an island ex excursion near Coco Pipi. Police officers in, uh, in yeah, police officers in Phuket are preparing a case against a Dutch tourist who was arrested by police on Monday afternoon following public outrage over TikTok, a TikTok video and an order from the Minister of Natural Resources and the Environment uh, to apprehend him after he used a spear gun to kill a parrotfish off Pipi Island in a protected natural park near Krabi and Phuket. The 22-year-old man faces up to five years of imprisonment if convicted in court and will almost certainly be deported and blacklisted from the kingdom. I mean, you know, the guy's 22. Uh, I don't really have any comment on it, but it, it's just one of those things. Again, guys, you've got to be very, very careful. Very, very careful. OK, um, I learned a lesson off Brian Flowers the other day. When you look at the chats, they've actually got a time on them. And Brian was saying, oh, I'm 10 minutes ahead. I'm 10 minutes behind. I thought, how does he know that? And I can actually see now. If I look at... Uh, Mark Hanley's uh, comment there that was at eight twenty one, and it's now yeah, so I'm, that's ten minutes behind. Yeah, I I I, uh, I see you in uh, Mark Mark Hanley. I see you in Brian's stream the other day. I was watching it, but I didn't leave any comments because I, what happens when you leave comments sometimes on other people's streams? Uh, people try to. It's almost like you're hijacking it because people like hi Thailand band. So I didn't say anything, but I see you in there leaving comments. And uh, yeah, it was a good stream. Brian's with me, uh, four thirty p.m. on Sunday, Mark. If you're interested in. Uh, because I did notice a comment where you, where you did say you liked uh, Brian's chat. So you, you'll be interested in that. Right. OK, let me just say thank you to uh, Jeff Say again. Oh, oh, you're always doing this, Jeff. Uh, something for the beverage fund or water bottle fund. It's definitely beverage fund, uh, Jeff. Uh, I got back to work late. OK, uh, right. Uh, that's a terrible joke, Paul. I'm not even going to put that up. Um, OK, right. Boohoo, what are you saying? Uh, F1, possibly our PM is bringing 1.2 million to Canada in the next few years. We'll drive demand up here. OK, I'm not sure what that's about. Uh, Paul Hoy. Have, you know what Hoy means in Thai, don't you? Uh, I can't say it here, guys. Right. Um, think about, you know, the clams that they're called Hoi Lai, aren't they? Uh, I, I love them. Hoi Lai with uh, pep, pep, spicy. Uh, but the word, the word there, H-O-E-Y, it means something. Uh, think of the clams. All right. Uh, happy birthday, Franco. Fill your boots. And I'm not talking Chinese buffet. OK. Uh, might have missed a few comments here, guys. Sorry about that. Lots of news out there. Uh, not too much news, but quite long stories. Uh, Franco, how you doing, birthday boy? Yeah, you have a good one tomorrow. Um, Welsh 32, 15 day is 30, and 30 is now 45. Yeah, I got confused about the 15 day one because when I, whenever I've gone to Thailand, I've got 28 or 30 days. I've never, I've never been stamped 15 days. Has anybody here been stamped for 15 days? I didn't read that bit out because I, I, it kind of confused me because it said they're extending the 15 day uh, to 30 days and the 30 days to 45. And I thought, what's what's the 15 day one? I don't know. If, I've never had 15 days. Um, I might. I'm still I'm in an R myself because I'm going out for minimum two months, maybe three months. I'm actually I'm in an R and about getting my long term visa. You know, it lasts me a year sort of thing. Um it cost me about 950 pounds, but that's with a non-immigrant O, oh, the long-term visa. And you, if you want to go out and I'll have to come out of the country and come back again, you've got to get a multiple entry stamp, just one, but that's about 5,000 baht. Um, I'm thinking about it. I don't know yet. It's a lot of money if I'm not going to be in Thailand all the time. 
Um, right. Did I say hi to you, Clive? I did, didn't I? You were in the, you were in, you were, you were up on the, uh, in one of the little phases last Sunday. Um, okay. Let's have a look. Uh, cor uh, yeah, corporate Mahan, you're saying good for the Dutch guy. Hope he becomes the prison sissy playing stupid games with stupid prizes. It, it was probably just naive. I mean, it's crazy, really. Uh, parrot fish, they're quite, they're quite rare fish, but that wasn't the only fish that he actually, I, I, I just, when I read these stories, I read, I kind of condense it down just to give you the, the bare minimum facts. Otherwise, it'd be like I'd be reading out news. And I'm not a news channel. I just like to sort of read little bits and snippets that are interesting. But apparently, he had quite a few fish on this stick. It went uh, over TikTok. A lot of Thai people seen it. They went ballistic because Thailand, they are, um, you know, they are very serious about trying to keep their country, their natural beauty. You know, for instance, with the suntan lotion, unless you get the... Um, the, the suntan lotion that doesn't bleach a coral and you can get that suntan lotion um you know it's illegal to have regular suntan lotion on the beach uh, I, i've even known cases where guys have been putting suntan oil on out jumped in and and a girl has pulled him off the beach and called the police you know uh you know so they are they are trying and you know for that guy to take a spear gun and, and start shooting parrot fish very stupid but again do you remember when you um you know do you remember when you were 22 i mean when i was 22 i did some really stupid things really stupid it's easy to look back now and say you know oh uh you know i made a mistake but we, we've all done it haven't we but unfortunately that young man's going to pay uh if he's falling in love with thailand he wants to go back he's, he's going to pay he could he could get up to five years in jail and i would imagine because he's young probably hasn't got too much money i would imagine he probably will get that long in jail and he'll come out a different person um and, he, and he'll never go back to Thailand. He won't want to go back to Thailand, uh, will he? Um, right, Lester Paul says, uh, have you seen it's also a no-no to touch or pat someone's head? Yeah, I think most people, they know that one, don't they? I've actually got a video. Uh, I've done a recent, I've done two of them, actually, 30 things to know before you go to Thailand with lots of tips, uh, lots of positive tips. And then I did a volume two. If you haven't been before and you're going out there, read that because they are good practical tips. Everything from where to get a SIM card from, where to change money, uh, just tips. And they're, they're not like, it's not 20 don't do these, 20 bad things, 20 It's not that. It's just to help you when you get there. So, you know, where to queue for taxis, where in certain places, where to get a SIM card, um, you know, not to use the sunscreen, uh, taking aerosols, you know, lots and lots of things. Uh, there, there, there are a couple of videos there for you. Uh, Reggie Vibes, his channel's back on. Okay. Are you talking about uh, Brian Flowers? If you are, I'm just assuming. It's not back on. Uh, it's actually a new channel that Brian's started, but he's uploading a lot of his older videos um, that he had on his old channel. I know why the channel got banned, but I can't repeat it here. It was just a silly mistake. Uh, well, it wasn't a mistake, really. It was um, something that Brian wasn't aware of. Um, YouTube are really strict, and they just caught him out. He knows now, and I won't do it because they told me. Right, Jeff Fried Rice, just wanted to show some love. Thank you for all you do. Thanks, Jeff Fried Rice, and uh, I'll show you some love back. <laughs> right, uh, okay, uh, let's let's keep going. Uh, Yours Travels, how are you doing? Good to have you in again, Steve. 45 days in spot on for my 40-day trip. Yeah, you'll, you'll enjoy it. You haven't been to Thailand before. You're going to have a real good time. Uh, Craig, is it is it Craig Malone? Ex extent of patty is so it will be a new experience for me i suspect yeah um okay so craig says i'm planning to try and go to thailand either end of the year or start of next my job gives a month off and a month's on so should be good i've got plenty of experience of entertainment but not to the okay so you ran out of time uh, of space there uh, the only thing i'd say to you craig um try to go at the end of the year like the high season is kind of right like the end of october and really november december tails off in january it's a lot cooler you know bangkok's very very hot it doesn't cool down in the evening yeah the sun goes in uh, but it's still very very hot and sticky but when i was there in december it, it was kind of like 26 28 in the evening and that <clears throat> that's quite doable you know you sit in an outside bar it's hot but it's you're not sweating your cob off like in the summertime you know um Okay, Mark Paul Hoskins said it was 15 days many years ago. Yeah, I, I, I'm really confused, Paul, because they're saying right now they're going to extend from 15 days to 30 days. I know we know 30 days to 45 days, but unless unless it's 15 days when you ah, that's what it might be. I think when you come in over land, you might only get 15 days. So if you were to come through from Burma, for instance, in a minibus, probably they only get. I'll, I'll look it up. 
for next week. But I'm guessing that's what it is. You get 15 days if you come on a, a land border. So if you come through Laos, but mind you, I don't think that's right either because I know guys who have gone out and all right. Let me let me look it up and I I, I won't assume and guess. I'll find out for next week. Um, okay. Uh, corporate McMahon, any of you mongers want uh, went to win Milagogo? It still acted like a pre mobile time. Okay, do you know that's one place I haven't been to? Uh, obviously, when I was in Patia in December, it, none, none of the Gogo bars were open, and uh, people have told me about this place. It was it's after my time when I lived there, and um, yeah, I'll definitely go and have a look for for market research only. You understand? Um, okay. World, world traveler forever passport holders of certain countries get okay right good explanation right okay that makes sense uh passport holders of certain countries get only 15 days the extension after the visa exemption is still 30 days for 1900 bar okay all right well thanks for that explanation we know now but it doesn't affect us does it because we get 30 days uh we get 30 days when we're going anyway which is now 45 days but i'll still need to extend uh, right, Kay Jensen, uh, good evening from Barcelona, uh, soon Bangkok. Yeah, and uh, thanks for the, the five euros. I'll be cracking one open uh, soon. And uh, James Casey, another generous man. Uh, competition idea, Peter, a bit like Scylla Black's blind date. Uh, any ideas are good, uh, James. Thanks for the super chat, by the way. Uh, you get three of your mongers in on video chat. One monger dressed as, dressed as a ladyboy. Uh, would that work? Uh, lady boy with three questions for the three mongers you play you play the silver black role that would take some organizing wouldn't it i mean we, who who out there uh would actually come on and be a lady boy like would they have the wigs and the cost the dress and you know i mean i don't want the yorkie man who's got five o'clock shadow i mean they'd have to be i don't think they'd be very convincing james because when you look at thai lady boys they actually look like women don't they you know i mean you look we're doing we're doing the lady boy competition much later on of course um but they look like women, don't they? I mean, if I didn't, if you didn't know, you would think from the pictures. But you know, I've seen a few guys dressed in women's clothes. We got a guy who lives here, and, and he honestly, he looks like a truck driver in a dress. I don't know. It's a great idea. Let me give it some thought. But thanks for the super chat, um, James. Uh, very nice of you. Right. Um, K Jensen says best expat bar area in Hawaii. Now, any advice? I I, I like there's there's a lot of bar areas. Uh, uh, K Jensen. I stay in Soy 94. It's a, it's all just off the Sukhumvit Highway. Um, the reason I stay there is because there's a lot of bar areas and restaurants. I stay in a hotel called the Initial Hotel. It's about 600 baht a night. I take a corner room. It's very, very nice. And uh, everything's there. You've got a big 7-Eleven on Soy 94. A lot of places to eat. There's a lot of bar areas. But if you want to go to the real uh, serious beer bars, you know, with all the girls and stuff, you either want to go to Soy Bintabart which is right next door to the Hilton, which is a big bar area. Uh, and you've got Soy 80 as well, which is a very long Soy. Uh, it just aligns the bars. It's, um, you know, it, it, well, I like Hawaiian. It's not for everybody. It's a bit quiet for some people. Uh, there isn't any go-go bars, but uh, that you you won't run out of um, places to visit there. Uh, Ivan, lots of comments from you there. Uh, no, they are extending from 30 to 45. Well, I did say that, I, uh, Ivan. I said they, it, they're extending from 30 to 45. It was the 15-day bit I didn't get because they've said, they're extending from 15 days to 30 days, and then they're going to extend the 30 days to 45 days. So I said that, but I didn't understand the 15-day bit, but somebody's explained it now. Um, yeah, okay, so Sean's confirmed that as well. He says, yes, yeah, certain borders were 15 days. Um, yeah, and, and Rick T.E. as well. Some countries, yeah, okay. Okay, so let's move away from this subject now. We've got it now. Uh, corporate, is it corporate Mac Mahan? Uh, K. Jensen, ask a, is it cab driver to take you to Mike? Lit uh, okay, very clever. Uh, right. Is it Chris, Christian, visa on a row, 15 days now, exemption 30 days from some countries? All right. Uh, I, I'm doing this Brian Flowers thing now. I'm seeing how far behind I am in the chat. So I, Brian's quicker than me. I have to actually calculate it. Um, Daniel Rubini. Uh, I've done that one. Have I? Corporate, are oh, you talking to someone else? Well, I'm not going to talk about this 15-day visa thing anymore. I'll just do this last one, okay? Someone said 15-day visa on arrival for the Chinese, Indians, etc. Countries not covered by visa exception. Okay, so we know now. We don't need to dwell on this any any longer, okay? Um, is it Wheelstone Radar? I hope to visit soon while I still have some mobility left. Oh, that's a bit depressing. Uh, and visit one of the famous uh, Thailand he-shes. Okay, well, we've got the competition 
uh, on later. But you know, you know, as long as you as long as you're mobile, you're never too old to go to Thailand and have fun. I mean, that's a great thing about it. I I've seen not once, several times, a bar girl on the back of a guy's electric wheelchair, like flying down Beach Road. She's on the back, and uh, you know, it's all about money at the end of the day. Um, okay, corporate Mahan Peter, is that the best for market research? D Windmill Agogo was the craziest bar. Peter, I saw freaky stuff there. Must go there. Yeah, and this is what I heard. I was joking about the market research. When I go there, I'm going to have a good time, right? Um, but, you know, I, I've i never been in the windmill because it wasn't there when I used to frequent um, Patia a lot in the old days. Uh, I see Happy Agogo still there. That will hold a lot of memories for me. Um, but I'll, I'll definitely visit it. And, of course, when I'm living in Thailand, I mean, I'll be in a live stream and I'll be right. I'm in Thailand. I've just come from the windmill Agogo bar. And, uh, you know, it'll, it'll be great. Um Right. Clive says, hey, Peter, on Sunday, I'll, I'll show everyone my passport photo. Unfortunately, I did it in lockdown and took the picture online. It said to open my eyes more, laugh at that photo. is hilarious. OK, so, uh, guys, if you weren't in the Sunday stream, I've got a new feature now. And um, what I do right at the end when everybody's had too much to drink, I send out a link and the first 10 people can come into the stream. There's no interview. There's nothing. You can't talk to anybody because there's 10 people there. There's all feedback and everybody's. Like you, where what you're looking at now, there's 10 little pictures there. Clive was there and uh, a few others were there. We had seven in on Sunday night. But all I did, I sent out a link. If you've got a camera and a microphone, you've just got to watch your speakers. Like if you've got external speakers, turn them away because you'll get feedback. Like I've got external ones. I turn them away so it doesn't pick up the feedback on here. And if you on a laptop, for instance, turn the volume right down to the minimal so you can just about hear it because otherwise – when we had seven people up, there was all feedback coming through and everything. But it's crazy stuff. You know, I just send out the link. Everyone comes in. I'm not talking. I'm, I mean, everybody else is talking to everyone. I'm just watching, you know. But 10 minutes and then I say good night. So if you want to come in on Sunday night at the end, it won't be a long. It's definitely not going to be four and a half hours, four hours, 20 minutes like last week. Um, Christopher Doyle. Hi, how are you doing? Uh, Clive Allen. Hi, Danny Ho. Cracking one. Uh, cracking one open what i thought you were on the sub yeah i've already covered that uh danny unfortunately i fell down at the first trip i'm not in a good place at the moment as far as my surroundings family house sale moving to thailand you know i'm, I'm not mentally kind of motivated to do it it was it was it was good on it was good on paper but uh i am i am very strong will but I'm, I'm not in the right place right now to do it okay it's and i enjoy a bit uh, I'm gonna have to stay fat for a while. Okay, I'm not a huge. I mean, I'm, a, I'm I'm like anyone else at my age. I've got a few extra pounds, but I'm not like you know. I'm not walking down the street like with tree trunk legs or anything like that. Um, right, Lester Paul. Uh, when you're there, no vlogs from favorite bars and show some girls on weekend. I'll tell you what, Lester Paul. Um, the problem is, uh, and and you'll see this with a lot of other YouTubers, when you do live streams near bars, the music comes onto the onto your upload and the, the the is it an algorithm youtube has got software that's really really clever they've got every song in that algorithm that's ever been copyrighted and as soon as it picks it up it's not a person it's it's software they'll just take your video down and you'll find this is a big issue for a lot of youtubers and, and i'll give you an example what happens say you like for instance um Say I want to show you, uh, I'm not going to do this, but just say for an example, I wanted to walk down Soy 6 in Patia and show you the bars because you've never seen a video from Soy 6 before. Just imagine that, right? What I would have to do is go over in the daytime and film it, so and then I could talk at the same time, or I would have to go and film at nighttime, then get rid of the soundtrack, play it, and dub over it. They're just so strict, it is, and it's so frustrating because – we're doing we're doing videos about Thailand. A lot, a lot of it, you know. We look. Let's be honest about it. I'm not making videos about temples and sunsets, right? And uh, you know, beautiful beaches. I'm, that, that's not what I'm about. Okay, so a lot of it is around the bars, and you know, the, there is music coming over the top, and you you just can't do it. it. And it's it's such a pain. It really is. Right, Colin Moore. You would be shocked at how many ladyboy truck drivers there are. I know of about ten in the UK. It's not pretty. No, I, I, I believe you. I mean, if they're not hurting anybody, that's fine. But all I'm saying is to get them on here and do a, a kind of silla black guest, the lady boy, I, it'd be really hard to find, you know, a guy every week to do it, wouldn't it? Um, Mike, I've said, uh, Mike, how are you doing? I'll give you a couple of shout out, Mike, because I, I am aware you became a member um, recently and I put your name up earlier. I think you probably just come in. Mr. Regler Pub said, hello. He thinks you're fantastic. Okay. 
I I haven't been on Mr. Egg's stream ever, and I should do really because he's friends with Frankel. Frankel moderates for him, so maybe the next one he does, I'll go in and say hello. I've always wondered why uh, what's his, uh, Mr. Egg. I've always wondered why he holds that big microphone because you, it's really strange. Because I've got this. Uh, let me just take this off. I've got this little thing here, and it does the job. And you know, I, I, he's got this bloody great. You know, he's like Terry Wogan almost. I I've never understood that, but I'll go. I'll go and check him out. Um, I, I don't have anything against the guy. I, I don't know him, actually. I mean, I know of him, but I've never spoken to him. And in fact, let me crack a beer up and I'll just tell you this. When I when I went to uh, Patia and I met Trevor and I met Ride for Kicks, I uh, forget his name, and I met Nick Dean. I didn't meet Martin because he wasn't there, but I met a few of them. Um, I never met Phil from the pub. That's his name, isn't it, Phil? <coughs> I never met him. And it wasn't like I was trying to avoid him or I didn't want to meet him. It's just everywhere Trevor took me, they were kind of in small groups, these guys. Uh, and I just never bumped into him. And I, I didn't really have a reason to kind of go out my way and go down there uh, and say hello. So, yeah, I'll, I'll go into one of his streams and say hi. Um, he didn't pay you to say that, did he? Right, okay, only joking. Right, okay, we're off. We're off. We're on the beers. Let me... Oh, my ice has moved. Hang on. That's it. Was that on properly? Right. Oh, St. Etienne. Cheers, guys. Here we go. Let me just take this off. Uh, what are you saying, Jeff? Friday. It's not the size of the mic that counts. It's the motion of your voice. I don't know, uh, Jeff. I know you're only joking, but some people, I'm not saying Phil does this, but some people, they need something to hold that gives them confidence. So the, the fact that he's got this microphone to hold on while he's talking, maybe it gives him confidence. I know he's an ex-DJ. Somebody told me maybe that's something to do with it. I don't know. But whatever it is, cheers. We're on the first one tonight. Oh, that's really cold. I stuck it in the freezer for half an hour and it's really cold. Right, only in Thailand. Just trying all these St. Etienne lager for the first time and it's very nice. Of course. Uh, 4.6. Uh, I think it's 4.8. I don't think it's 4.6. Let me have a look. 4.6. That's a breakfast lager. Yeah, it's 4.8. I don't know if you can read that. Can you see that? Um you can just about make that out. It's 4.8. Obviously, a rip-off design from um, Stella, but Stella's crap anyway. But, yeah, it's really, it's really, really nice. And it's £2.99 for four cans. Uh, just, yeah, it's very nice. Four point, only 2 99 for a four-pack. Highly recommended. And my new drink. Thanks, Pete, for the recommendation. Uh, and I'll give you another tip if you, if you get drinking this regular. Buy your spirits from Aldi as well. I used to buy a litre of whiskey from the co-op. It's £18.50. I now get a litre of whiskey from Aldi. It's $14.99. Um, I don't drink like a, a lot of whiskey. I'll, I'll drink probably a quarter of a bottle tonight. Uh, and then I don't drink it in the week a lot of the time. But what I tend to do now is I'll buy two cases, not one case, two cases and two liters of whiskey. And that'll last me a month, probably more on the whiskey. Um, it's just so convenient because, you know, you've got to go oldie. It's a bit of a pain to get to. Um, uh, Reggie Vibes, have one, have one on me, Peter. I will, Reggie Vibes. Thank you very much. And it looks like, are you a truck driver as well there? Um, yeah, cheers. Um, yeah, so, it, you know, I, I feel a bit embarrassed when I'm in Aldi because I got a pint of milk and uh, half a dozen eggs, two cases of beer and two litres of whiskey. But I and I, always, I don't know why. I don't have to explain myself. But I always say to the girl, oh, this will last me for a month, you know, because I'm thinking young girl. She's about 22. She's looking at me like, oh, God, you know, here we go. Um, yeah, you're right. Paul Shackleton. Uh, at least you've nailed it now, St. Etienne. It only took me about six months, Paul. Um Right, Boohoo says, Rush Lim, Limbo, is it? Has a golden microphone. Yeah, uh, Mark Hanley, uh, vlogging a dead horse. Dick did knock the geezer a good in. I don't know him either. Uh, at Atago, is it? 32, I like to see the country too. Not uh, nice. Uh, okay. Um, Right, Steve says, uh, yours travels. The St. Etienne I get is 4.6. It's weird. Some That's really weird because I wouldn't have bought it if I, if it was 4.6 because I um, I used to drink this German lager from Aldi. And it's, it's see, that's a regular tin. That's for, I believe it's 440 ml. And uh, it's just a regular tin. But the German one I used to have was a kind of a, you know, it wasn't, you, it was between the pint and the 440. But I've never seen the 4.6. I'm going to check it now because I don't want 4.6. But look, I'm not lying. Look, you can see it there. Oh, yeah, look. 4.8. Yeah, it's weird. 4.6. Brush your teeth with that. 
Um, right, Gary Russell. Uh, hi, Peter Tin Newton from the oh Tim Newton. I think you might put Tin Newton. Uh, who's Tin Tin Newton? Right, Tim Newton from the tie is back on YouTube with Tim New today. Okay, I'll look out for that. I haven't seen that. Uh, I think he's a very good presenter. Like I said last week. Um, right, Ke Kevin Sutherland. Will you be travelling around the villages in toilet when you go? If if I had. If I hello everybody, thank you for sure. Uh, what's that, Kev? Will you watched a lot? Was, oh, no, it was someone else. Will you be traveling around the villages in toilet when you go? Not sure what you mean. Well, I'll just take the first bit. Will you be traveling around the village? I won't be going up to, well, I might go to East Ham, but I'm not going to go to like rural villages and uh, film and, oh, look, there's a girl getting water out of her well. No, I'll, I'll do I'll do the tourist spots, you know, Rayong, uh, Hua Hin, Chatham. I did them in December, didn't I? But I want to do much more detail. You guys bought me the GoPro, and I've been buying all these. Uh, like it's a case. I've been buying all these extras. Mike, Michael from I always get it wrong. It's AGR Sports or AVG. I get it wrong. If you're out there, Michael, put it up, and I'll I'll put it up on the channel. But Michael gave me a really good tip. Uh, you know, Michael's got he he he's um sells around the world a lot of motorcycle attire, and I got this bracket to screw onto a motorbike. Um, I think I've showed you this before, but Michael gave me a top tip. Because Mike was ridden all over Thailand on a motorbike. And I got this. And apparently it's not the best thing. It was about £20 off Amazon. But what you do, you take the wing mirror off, like uh, behind the click or something like that. And you put that hole through the, the top, the bottom thread. And then you put the wing mirror back on, tighten up the nut. And then the GoPro goes kind of here. That might, is that, uh, right, what, Stephen sent me a photo. I shouldn't really look at my phone, but it might be relevant to the stream. Um, a quick look. Okay, you just said, yeah, okay, right. So Steve's just sent me a photo. I don't know if you can see this, but uh, it's actually, it does. It says 4.6. That's that's really weird because it's 4.8 where I go. Anyway, never mind. Enough about the St. Etienne. Right, so, yeah, so that goes on. It's quite a good idea, really. That goes on the wing, on the mirror, and then the GoPro goes in there. So you you can point it where you want it. You're riding along, and it, but when you go over bumps, you know, you, it does all this. So Michael, I can't get it down because it's up there. He watched a lot of CB Media um, videos, and when he makes videos, it's, he's on his bike perfectly smooth. And Michael said to me, I always wondered, how the hell did he, how does he get them shots? Because, you know, the camera's perfectly still. And what it is, you wear a, you know, like the bailiffs wear, like a, 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 a strap thing, and the camera sits there. And apparently your body absorbs all the shock from the road, and uh, that's the way to go. So that I've now made that redundant. So that was a waste of 20 pound, and I've now, bought a, 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 one of these straps but it, it was made for a chinese guy because i've got it on the biggest set and it's still like crushing me uh mark um you'll be doing humanization work in thailand helping bar girls support their families oh absolutely mark absolutely um kevin sullen good morning peter and people watching your show i hope you are having a good time will you be trying oh i've read that already only on the first beer as well um let's see how far i am behind the chats uh okay i think i've missed a few uh Apologies, as always. Right, Lewis C. Uh, Phil got the microphone to cover a broken tooth, but I liked it and it kept it even. I, I never thought of that. It's quite clever, actually, isn't it? Why don't you just get his tooth fixed? I mean, Thailand's a place to get your teeth fixed. I'm going to get mine done. I had all mine. Um, when I was in Bangkok the last time, I had them all cleaned. Because uh, you get trolls, right? Sometimes I'll read a story out and somebody will leave a comment saying, get your rotten teeth fixed or something like that. And I don't have rotten teeth, but I've got a gap. And I had them all cleaned last time I was there. And uh, I want to do something with these, like the top ones. See, they're all straight. And I want to do something here. But the last time I was there, she said it'd take two weeks. And I went on the last week. But when I do that, I'll make a video about the dentistry over there because that's um, something that people want to know about. Uh, only in Thailand says, uh, Peter, on my can, the St. Etienne is 4.6. Well, we're very lucky around here, aren't we? I, I suppose they can't change it now. Uh, you know, go back and ask for your money. That I've drank this, but it was only 4.6. Uh, Lee says, uh, okay, I haven't, I, I, I don't know that uh, YouTuber. Uh, Toby Brennan, will you be heading to Villa Market in Bangkok, Pete, for your English goodies? It's not like the old days, uh, Toby, like 25 years ago, there wasn't, uh, to get your, you're quite right, to get your uh, your bits of British food and stuff. Um, uh, just read one from there, Franco. Hang on, let me just, uh, just quickly on this one, Toby. There's lots of places that sell British food now. In the old days, it was like, yeah, you're headed to Villa. There was one near uh, Soy 24 on the opposite side of the road, and there was another one somewhere. But now you can get foreign food pretty much everywhere. Uh, but yeah, your big C, they do it. Tesco, Lotus, you can get everything now. Um, right, Mark Hanley, I believe, 
left me a super chat and I've missed it. Let me just see if I can find that because uh, Frankel's just told me. Let me just have a look. Because, uh, you know, when people leave a super chat, I don't like to, oh, someone left me a super chat. Thanks for that, whoever that was. I like to say hello to them. So, uh, Mark Canley, I, I was right, Daft. Okay, <laughs> I'm not going to read that one out, Mark. Uh, right, I can't find it, Franco. I can't find it. it must have been a long time ago. Uh, yeah, I can't find it. Okay, Mark Hanley, uh, I'll see the super chat later. If you've left a super chat, Franco pointed out. Thank you very much for that. I'm sorry I missed it, but I was I was into something, wasn't I? But uh, good man, thank you. Right, Steve Steve Hills. Any news on the bloke Gary that got whacked with a weight in the? I haven't heard anything about that. That was the guy who was working out in the gym, and the guy attacked him with a weight. That was brutal, wasn't it? Absolutely brutal. Um, I know they 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 had a crowd um, crowdfunding page because he needed thousands to it, it broke the bone behind his eye. I mean, absolutely animal. No, he was animals wouldn't do that, would they? Um, no, I, I haven't heard anything more about him. Uh, Deep the trucker Peter with a bailiff wife beat a vest next week. Yeah, they're really it's really tight actually that thing. I might might buy another one. Um, Right, we'll have to do a competition soon. Another couple of minutes. We'll do the spot the tie girl. You should be getting good at it now. Uh, Clive says, because I'm going to be single for the first time. Uh, Peter, if you hit on a hottie, you'll be off to his son. Not me, Clive. It's the last thing on my mind. Um, I think I'm too... Um, it'd take a lot for me to really trust someone out there who... You know, I, I'd be like, "What do you, do you remember the, the Do you remember the film Meet the Parents with um, ah, oh, what's his name, De Niro, uh, Robert De Niro? Meet the Parents, where he put the lie detector on him. He's an ex CIA guy, and the boyfriend of his daughter came around. He put him on a lie detector. I'd be like that with a tiger. I put on a lie detector, and you know, are you working? Have you been to Therme Cafe by yourself? You know, the old needles going. Uh, have you ever been to Patia alone? Right. Um, Okay, let's go down to some of the latest ones. Okay, Mark, thank you. thanks for that. Uh, just the usual fiver, mate. No worries. All right, great stuff. Thank you. And and again, Mark, Brian's on coming. I've got a special stream on Sunday at 4.30 p.m. because it's not an interview. It's just a get-together with me and Brian. It's not a regular stream. He's coming on for an hour or so. We're probably going to talk a lot about trolling and armchair critics and idiots, to be fair. Um, I, I see you on his chat the other day, uh, the other day, two days ago. It was very entertaining, wasn't it? He's very knowledgeable. Uh, but then I'll be back Sunday night for a regular stream. Okay. Um, yeah, Dave Andrews says, yeah, uh, Mark gave a £5 super chat. Okay. It's, it's very rare that I actually miss them. Very rare. Um, okay. Carl D says, spot the ladyboy competition. We'll do that about, uh, what's the time now? It's coming up for nine o'clock now, isn't it? So we're going to do one competition soon. We'll do the manga minute after that. We'll do joke of the week, which probably never gets a laugh, but we're going to do it anyway. And then we'll probably do the um, uh, the ladyboy competition probably about half an hour, 20 minutes uh, towards the end. Uh, right, James, you've been very generous. Tonight. That's the second one tonight. Peter, any chance you need a personal assistant out there for your YouTube channel looking to keep busy and get into something in Bangkok? It, the thing is, Paul, um, James, it's always, yeah, I mean, if you, if you want to, do some filming or something i don't mind but the thing is i don't earn enough money i mean you might think i'm bullshitting honestly because you see all these super chats coming in you think wow he's creaming it in he's making loads of money but you know youtube keep 30 percent of it and uh, you know it looks like there's a lot coming in and it's great and i tally it up at the end of the night and after youtube takes their cut i might get 50 pound which is great i appreciate it and it's brilliant um but i don't earn enough to actually pay somebody you know to actually say okay can you come with me for the day and i'll give you I don't know, hundred dollars or fifty dollars. There, there just isn't the money in it, unless unless you're big like um, CB Media, for instance. It's got four hundred thousand subscribers, hasn't he? Some of these guys out there who are not Thai based, um, you know, I've I've seen sites with two million, five million, even ten million. Some of the prankster video um, guys, the American ones. There's a guy I watch quite often. He, he's quite funny. He does. He'll be walking the park and he's got a fart machine. That's all he does. You know, he does pranks like that. He walk past the crowd. It, it sounds like he's farting, and they're like, all these people are like. Oh, disgusting. He's got 10 million plus um, subscribers. And he made a video called I Went to Buy a Lamborghini with what, 250, was it 200, 350? I can't remember. But he went with what his prank was. He got $1 notes. He had to take like four suitcases of $1. So those people make real big money. But, you know, I mean, if you want to meet up and have a beer somewhere and talk about it, if, if you're just looking for something to do to kind of fill your time, yeah, no problem. But I don't. Honestly, Matt, I don't earn enough to actually pay anybody. I really don't. 
Um, even Apple, the taxi driver, you know, she wanted to get involved a little bit with me. She said, oh, I can drive you around and, you know, I'll give you a good rate and we can do this and do that. And she's, you know, she's all right. Uh, but I don't, you know, I don't earn enough to say, okay, I'll pay you 2,000 baht for the day, Apple, or 3,000, let's go up to Isan. Um, you know, maybe maybe when I'm out there, if I get up to 100,000 subscribers one day, then I'll start to make decent money. Um, I'll tell you what we should do now. Well, let's change this background for a while. Uh, have I got a new one? Let's put this one up, get you in the mood for the patio go goals. Right. Um, okay. Tony, thank you, mate. Uh, Tony7682, how close would you say the tourism and hospital hospitality industry in Thailand is to being back to normal? Well, well, I don't actually know, Tony, because the last time I was there, and thanks for the super chat, the last time I was there was in December, and when I was there in December, it was absolutely terrible. But I had a good time, but bars were closing at 9 o'clock, right? They think it's bad now, 2 p.m. Bars were closing at 9 o'clock. All the girls had gone up to their villages, and they were on only fans and cameras and stuff, so... All the gogo bars were closed. The regular bars were closing at nine. I caught COVID. It wasn't great fun, to be honest with you. I'm going out in October. I'll be able to answer that question, but I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, I watch other people's videos, and they they saying it's getting better and better and better. Um, there's lots of good things happening, isn't there? I think there's a little bit more. Was there some other good news here? Um, we did the visa. Uh, yeah, I mean that's. Yeah, I mean, look, there's just two lines here. The 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 government will declare COVID-19 an endemic in October, and the CCSA will then no longer be the main agency dealing with the disease. So even for the Thais now, they did a survey with Thai people who a lot of them now are kind of, they're not being so, I think it was something like 17% don't want to wear masks now. Even before we had a pandemic, Thais have always worn masks because of the pollution in Bangkok. I've worn masks sometimes because the first sort of few days in Bangkok, I always get a really rough throat because of the pollution. So Thais will always wear the masks, not only for the, um, you know, the Rona, Movid, whatever. Um, but from what I'm seeing now, it is getting closer and closer. But they had, I think in July, I read somewhere, was it? Yeah, it was. Th they had 33 million visitors. I don't know if it was up to July or in July, uh, but it was a lot, a lot, a lot more than, the, you know, the previous year. Um Uh, Martin Ryder says, uh, why is that not coming up then? Right, are you going to rent now the seller has pulled out? Uh, no, because I can't get enough money out of it, Martin, to, I've got to give my, I've promised my wife the lion's share of this place. I've got some rental properties and I've said to her that I'll, she can have most of the money from here so she can buy a little, she's, she wants to buy a house for her and my daughter and I'm going to help them out and everything, you know. Um, so no, I, I, when I go to Thailand, I would, I would never buy a property, but I, I will rent in Thailand, but I'm not going to rent this one. No, uh, Boulder Dan, nice to see you in having, uh, thanks for that super chat. I haven't seen him before Boulder Dan. Are you uh, new to the stream? Uh, good to have you in if you are. Um, okay. So Wan, so Wan Sharma, Hey Peter, Thailand is now 50% recovered. Not as good as past, but it's still best party destination in Asia. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, where, where else can you go? It depends what you go. People come in and leave me comments and say things like, oh, there's more to Thailand than go-go bars. I know that. Of course I do. Um, but, you know, a lot of people like to go to Thailand to visit go-go bars. Uh, you know, if they don't hurt anyone, why not? Uh, Kevin Sutherland, thank you, my friend. Very generous. $20 super sticker. And that goes straight into the Cronenberg. No, I'm not on the Cronenberg anymore. The St. Etiot Fund, the beer fund. Okay. Uh, Cashier says, I don't think the 2019 experience will ever come back. It's uh, mostly a drinking scene and the bar find scene now. Um, I don't know. I mean, we'll just have to wait, won't we? Um, let's have a look. Right. Uh, Clive says, I think Asians wore masks after the SARS outbreak, to be honest. Yeah, there was probably a lot of that to do with it as well, uh, Clive. But the thing is, from my experience, many, many years in Thailand, I know the Thais, especially in Bangkok, they have always worn masks because the pollution is bad. You know, when you're out traveling in that, uh diesel you know all the fumes that they get in the city uh i i notice it the first few days i'm there my throat feels horrible um leroy 420 pandemic more like panic emic yeah okay very clever uh david leon uh do thai dentists do yeah they do everything everything i'm going to do a video on it when i'm out there because like i say i've i've had my top gnashes done there years ago and that was in patia but the bottom ones i've got a, a gap and they need to be just, they're clean. They don't look it, but they are, because I had them done just last time. 
but I need to get them done nice, you know. And a good example of that was, do you remember um, Ke Kevin, Kevin Thailand? Uh, he had a lovely set of teeth. He had them done in Thailand as well. Uh, Black Bolt, uh, that was funny, Peter. N new Thai girlfriend questionnaire. You should write one up. Okay. Uh, that was a new yeah, yeah, okay, maybe. Uh, Rob, how you doing, mate? How's life in the taxi down there? Uh, evening, Peter. I'm, s I'm sitting on a charger on my way home, watching on my phone. Oh, be careful, Rob. I don't want to lose you. I could miss another stream. I need my tie hit. Yeah, absolutely, because you've just come back. I know you had a really good time. Um, the the Baldy Vlogger. Good evening. Hope everyone is well. Neil Statin. Hi, Peter. Going to Huahin to meet that mad Aussie Johnny. And then I've never met Johnny. Johnny was due to come on our stream, and he, 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 he I'll be honest with you, I don't think he'll mind me saying this. We are, when I used to do the stream at lunchtimes with Simon, uh, my friend Simon, we had a lunchtime stream, didn't we? We contacted a few uh, YouTube creators. Some of them didn't even write back to us, but Johnny did. And we said, you want to come on here, tell us about Hawain and everything. I hadn't been to Hawain at that time, had I? I had. But we said, come on and talk with everyone. And yeah, I'll be on in the morning. He'd been up all night. And I mean all night. I don't mean he went to bed at six. I mean, he'd been up all night. And then he came on. He said, I can't do this stream. I'm, I'm, you know, at least he was honest. But yeah, he'd had a few. He'd had a few. Uh, so, Anne, uh, you are 100% right, Cashier. Recently, one night in a bar, I bought six lady drink for a girl and got a no from that girl. She said me, she, right, I'll tell you something about this. You might learn from this. Uh, here with the lesson. I'm not going to say who I was with. I was not in Bangkok or Pattaya. I was in another part of Thailand on my last trip uh, with a friend that I met out there. And we went to a small city that had a few bars, not many. We went into this one Bar. And obviously being married, I wasn't going to take any. I was playing pool with one of the girls, actually. That's it. Just play pool. And my friend, let me just say thank you to uh, Says Seatin. Thank you for that, mate. Appreciate it. Uh, my friend, there was one really, really pretty girl in the bar. And my friend who I was with speaks perfect Thai or very, very good Thai. And he sat with this girl who was a very beautiful girl. And he bought about six ladies drinks. So they, they were cheap. We weren't in Pattaya or Bangkok. We were in, we were in the sticks, but they had a few bars in this place. And uh, he was buying a bars, uh, bars. He was buying a drinks virtually all night. And at the end of the night, he said, oh, "Okay, uh, here, I'll pay your bar," because he knew what it was. Uh, and she said, "Oh no, I can't. Somebody's already paid it." And what had happened? My friend got really pissed. He got all the drinks back. What had happened? Some one of her regulars had come into the bar early, like say nine o'clock, looked over, seen her talking to my friend, paid the bar. So when she went to get the drinks, like you know, you're whoever he was, say his name's Steve, Steve's been in and paid your bar. So she knew this, but she continued drinking with my friend all night. At the end of it, my friend said to him, Ty, he said, right, he said, all them ladies drink, he said, take them off a bill. And he speaks Ty, and she did. And she, you know, I mean, I mean, she didn't kick off or anything like that, but the owner was kind of earwigging, you know, listening, and he knew what was going on. And, you know, I mean, she should have been honest with him because why is he sitting there buying a drink after drink after drink? Uh, you know, I mean, it's a bit naughty, isn't it? But you know, fair play to him. He managed to get, he said, when he got the bill of maybe 1500 baht, uh, he just said, right, these six ladies, drinks, take them off. You can pay for them. I'm not paying for them. And it was in Thai. She couldn't argue. And uh, he, he just said, look, you should have told me you'd been, had your bar paid. I, st I still would have bought you one or two drinks, but you know, and uh, I can't really go into detail because it's YouTube. But uh, anyway, that's the story. Um, Leroy Fortran, I see some photos from Patty the other day. Uh, of current girls in a particular bar and they were rough and quite old maybe 40 or older uh it really wasn't well she's not a very young girl there is she this one here she looks like she's been around the block a few times um you see the other thing that's coming to the mix what you've got to remember the other thing with the bars and the, gir the girls and the bars you know, they go to work and sit in their beer bar and talk to guys, which isn't very nice sometimes, is it? Because not all guys are nice guys. Uh, or they swing around the pole. But don't forget, you've got sites now like uh, Only Friends and technology. And a lot of these younger girls have learned. Uh, there's one Thai girl. She gets paid in US dollars. She does a stream. I told you this before. And she's making, you know, she's making a lot of money, big money, maybe $10,000 a month. I don't know. But in Thai, um, you know, she probably 100 times more than she's doing in a beer bar and she's sitting in her room and guys are like sending her hearts and ten dollars and twenty dollars and she's like undone in a top button she's like i might undo my second one if i get a few more hearts and these hearts represent tolkien's or whatever and why would she want to leave that and come back to a sweaty bar uh simon thank you for that mate appreciate that right uh i'll just read james's out and then we'll go into a competition uh leroy okay you i won't read it out because he's talking to someone else ricky um 
very clever. That's Rick E. Uh, Peter, can you please leave the questions, comments visible while you are answering them instead of closing? Them? Right, I'll do that. Yeah, absolutely. Let me just get rid of this bot. Uh, right, okay. Okay, so Franco, you're saying James Everett is Sunday, 16.30. So you, you must have asked when is Brian Flowers on. I normally have two streams, 8 o'clock on a Friday, 8 o'clock on a Sunday. Not every Sunday, just if I feel like it, which most Sundays I do feel like it. But I've got Brian Flowers on a special stream, 4.30 this Sunday. Uh, try and come along for that because Brian's quite a sensible guy and he's full of information, especially business. Um, right, okay, let's do a competition. We're going to do Spot the Tiger. I've tried to make it easier this week because a lot of guys get it wrong. So I'm going to play it. I'm going to leave it on screen for a full minute. And then, I'll, as usual, I'll play the answer. So all I'm looking for is just put the number of the girl who you think is Thai, okay, for a full minute. Let me just make sure I don't put the answers up. Okay. <laughs> Okay, bear with me, guys. I'm messing about in the background there. Okay, let me, uh, let's see. We, if you know your Thai girls, let me go right to the top. First one. Uh, right. Martin Ryder, no. Franco De Rosa, yes. World Traveler Forever, no. Paul Shackleton, no. Aya Manouts, no. Uh, we're only looking for the Thai girl. Jo George Van, I can't say your last name, sorry. No. Mark P, no. Actually, the dog, no. Martin Ryder, no. Mike Sands, no. Real Rini, no. Martin McCormick, no. Clive, no. Brian Street, no. Greg. Craig, no. James Casey, no. Lewis C, no. no. Not many right answers tonight, guys. I thought it'd be easier tonight. Uh, Boohoo, no. Anomaly Overseas, no. McLaren F1 Race, no. Will Smith, no. Craig, no. Marky Mark, yes, Marky Mark. Well done. Uh, Scout Sandy, 71, no. William Sullivan, no. Simon Goodson, uh, no. Tony 7682, no. No Name, no. Clive Allen, no. Martin Ryder, no. Sean T, no. <sighs> Clive, I've done, you've, you've put your answer up again, Clive. Glenn Hendricks, no. Leeds, yes, well done, mate. You got it. Darren Drew, no. John Malin, no. Lester Paul, no. Uh, Jorma Man Manico, is it? No. Jeff Fried Rice, no. Ricardo, no. Alex Curtin, no. Uh, David he he Heidelberg, no. Uh, yeah, I said yes, Mark. Uh, Yoss Travels, no. Uh, <laughs> all right, Mark, you're handy, number 11. Neil, no. Cashier, yeah, well done. Javier, no. Uh, Nick's Real, no. Gemini Star, yeah, a few right answers coming in now. Gary B71, no. Paul Augustine, uh, no. Silver Fox, no. Jolly Fox, no. Right, okay, I'm just going to read out the right answers now if there's any more and we'll run it. Ah, I'll read a few more wrong ones out. Alexander the Great, no. Rob, uh, no, not this time, Rob. The Baldy Vlogger, no. Only in Thailand, no. Clive again, no. Alex Ray, no. Bendover, no. CE77, no. Kevin Lampard, no. Richard Songa, no. Craig, no. Come on, let's have some right answers here. Dave Andrew, no. Fort Lass, no. JB, number two up to the bottom. Okay. Tom, yeah, you got it. Actually, uh, no, number nine, nine, actually the dog. Uh, Charlie Stewart, right? No. Old Fogarty, uh, good to have you in the stream, Old Fogarty. You leave a lot of nice comments on the stories. I do notice and I do remember, but unfortunately it's not number three. Right. Mark Hanley, no, not that one, mate. Uh, Pete Bailey, no. Sawan, no. Uh, Eric Whitefield, Whitfield, is it? No. Charles Sanders, no. Gee, J, I'm going to have to put you out of your misery, guys. Let me just, I'll just run down now. And if there's any more right ones, I'll read them. Um, so look. Gabor, Gabor Palikas, is it? Yeah, you got it right. Uh, I know I didn't pronounce your name out right. Uh, Black Bolt, uh, no, you didn't get it. I'm only right. Uh, Darren Howe, yeah, you got it. We're nearly there, guys. I've got to give you the right answer. Bernie, you got it. Uh, Ashley Simpson, you got it. Michael, you got it. John Hobson, you got it. Um, Clive, finally, well done. 
I'm not sure some of you guys are looking back on the answer where I say to the guy, yeah, you got it, because I'm getting a lot of right answers now. James Casey, yeah, Clive, yes, that's what you're doing, is it? You're going back to the ones where I've said, yeah, you got it right, and you're, you're getting the answer. Okay, I'm just going to run. If I haven't read your uh, yours out, apologies. I'm going to run the right answer now and uh, give you the answer to the uh, spot the tie girl. All right, well done if you got that right. I just, I'm smiling. I'm just reading out Lester Paul's comment there on the other screen. He says, uh, I love how the mongers who don't get it right do later in the list. I mean, it, yeah, I think there's a few guys out there who, uh, oh, let's not use the word cheating. That's quite strong. Maybe, maybe they're getting influenced by other people's right answers, but it's just for fun. So it doesn't matter. Uh, what should we do now? What should we do now? Okay, let's do the Monga Minute. We haven't, we'll do that now. We'll, I might do it again at the end if I can find it. All right, it's the Thailand Bound Monga Minute. Right, like I said, I might, I'll probably run that again right at the very end because it, it takes me a little bit of time to put it together and it's so short, isn't it? Right, let's do the joke of the week. <laughs> I can see everybody cringing. Oh, no, not joke of the week. Right, this is sent in by the fake Ed Sweeney, not the real Ed Sweeney, the fake Ed Sweeney. Uh, that's actually his username. He sent me three. Two of them were a bit long. This one isn't short. But anyway, here is the joke of the week, courtesy of the fake Ed Sweeney. A nun gets into a taxi and and notices that the young driver is staring at her in the rearview mirror. She asks him, why is he staring at her? He says, I have a question to ask you, but I don't want to offend you. She answers, my son, you cannot offend me when you're as old as I am and have been a nun as long as I have. You get a chance to see and hear just about everything. I'm sure that there's nothing you could say or ask that I would find offensive. Well, he says, I've always had a fantasy of kissing a nun. She replies, well... That's perfectly understa understandable. I may be able to help you with that, but only if you're single and you're a Catholic. The cab driver tells her, yes, I'm single. I'm, an, I'm a Catholic. Okay, the nun says, pull into the next alley. There he kisses the nun passionately. But when they get back on the road, the cab driver begins to cry. My dear child, says the nun, why are you crying? Sister, it is very painful to have to apologize to you for something I did only moments ago. But I must ask your forgiveness. I have sinned. I lied and I must confess. I'm married and I'm not a Catholic. The nun says, OK, don't worry about it. My name is Eric and I'm on my way to a Halloween party.
All right, that's over with. Let's uh, let's see what you said. I'm probably way behind the comments now. Um, Jeff Rice says it, it's not a ladyboy com contest. Well, we've still got that to come, but we'll leave that towards the end uh, because there are some people who don't like the ladyboy competition. They disappear as soon as I put it on. Uh, what else? What else? Let's have a look. Okay. K Jensen says number four looked too arrogant to be taught. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Darcy, two E's clearly. A I don't like this picture very much. I'm going to change this. Hang on. I don't know why I put this up. Uh, <clears throat> let's put up, um, put that one up from last week. Uh, or should we put this? Let's put this one up. Let's put that one up. Uh, right. Okay. Uh, Richard Martin, I'll have number five, please. Hong Kong. Uh, Paul Hoskin, massage before or after drinks. Gemini star. Only veteran mongers get it right. But it's right what Lester Paul said. You know, you get all the wrong answers. And I'll read out a few saying, well done, well done. And then suddenly every answer is right. So, you know, that's fair enough. People like to hear their name called out, don't they? John John Milan, I'm married to a Thai and keep getting it wrong. It's pictures. Uh, it's like the ladyboy competition. A lot of people after that, they'll say, oh, I'm in trouble when I get to Thailand because I always get it wrong. But you won't because in the flesh, it's, it's totally different, isn't it? Uh, Leonardo, good day, mongers. How you all doing? Uh, actually, the dog six was still the fittest. Uh, yeah, but it wasn't about who was the fittest, was it? It was about who, which one was Thai. Uh, Dave Andrew, 22 years being going to Thailand. Drink must be the problem for getting it wrong. Uh, Michael DiCaprio, it's potluck. They all look like Thai. Well, they're Asians, aren't they? It's like getting an English woman, a French woman, German, whatever. Uh, it'd be hard, wouldn't it? Uh, South, South Korean was lovely. Do you know what? Some of the North Korean girls are lovely as well. If you can see through that... Um, uh, they're a bit, you know, when you look at the pictures of North Korean girls, because they, they have it a bit, they have life tough, don't they? Uh, the toughness shows, but some of them are quite beautiful. I think I put a North Korean, I might put a North Korean up next week because I put one up last week. Um, okay, Tony says, could not see as comments were covering and two on screen. You mean, I'm not sure what you mean if you mean these two are the competition. Um Uh, how much would a cleaning lady cost? Uh, well, uh, I'm not, I, I, I'm not the person to answer. That. I did have a guy. I did. Well, I knew a guy. That's what he did when he went to, and they're not all available. There's some cleaning ladies are married, got kids, some, some of them, but I knew a guy who that's what he would do. He would only try to chat up cleaning. You know, when you go into the mall and you see these ladies cleaning, he'd try and chat them up, but you see the lot, a, a lot, I say most of them don't speak any English. That's, you know, they're uneducated. That's why they're doing cleaning jobs. So unless you've got a fairly, um, you know, a decent level of tie, it's, it's very difficult, isn't it? Because they're not going to speak English or they wouldn't be cleaning the floor in the mall. Um, and I'm not being judgmental. It's just a fact, isn't it? You know, when, when they come down from uh, East Sand, if they're not got an education, they're not, they're either going to end up in a factory or a cleaning job, something like that, a menial job. Um, all right. Yeah, Korean girls are, they are very beautiful. You know, if you look at some of these uh, K-pop, girls k-pop is very very popular in thailand now and the korean girls they, they they love the korean guys you get younger korean guys uh around patty and you see them they go they go mad they love them absolutely love them um yeah nick nick real says it takes me more than a minute yeah okay is the one in is the one in shorts a lady boy is that the probably last picture you're talking about i don't know they're just random pictures uh clive the more you have to drink, the more red faces come on. Woof, woof. You start off with about three, and then it's four, then it's five. I'm guessing each drink, there's another one added. Um, okay, only joking, Clive. Right, Ed Jones. I was in Patia last month. Yeah, there are more older girls, but there are plenty of good-looking girls from 19 upwards, and given so few tourists, it's still very easy. See, I'm surprised that you say given so few tourists, because when I was there in December, it was okay. I mean, it was quiet, and bars closed at nine, but it was okay. And, you know, I know a lot of people like... Um, Rob, who uh, just been to Thailand for the first time, went to Pate, and he said he had a good time. It was good. Um, okay, Javier says stunning. Uh, Mark says, uh, Monga Minute's gone all Korean. Um, it's gone all anything, to be honest with you, Mark, because it's really hard to find those sort of videos for the Monga Minute. You know, they've got to be a particular style, haven't they? Uh, and there are Thai girls. They're not, they're not all – a lot of them aren't Korean. They're actually – um, some of them are Chinese. A lot of them are Chinese, actually. Uh, there are some Thais. There's a lot of Koreans because a lot of good-looking Korean girls who do that sort of stuff. 
Um, but it's just the Monga minute. It's a minute of pretty girls dancing just to sort of relieve the pressure a little bit and enjoy it. You know, any single guys out there, they can listen to some nice music, watch the one minute. And, uh, you know, I've never I've never kind of said it's a, 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 a Thai Monga minute. It's just a Monga minute, isn't it? Right. Um, <laughs> 30 second handshake. Steven, disgusting. Right. Lester Paul. Uh, more wrongly, I've never got the Ladyboy one right ever. Well, Lester Paul, tonight is tonight. You're going to get it right tonight. What's your What's your phone number? I'll text you the right answer. I can't remember what it is actually. Um, on the Ladyboy competition, you'll notice a bit of music that you hear on Ed Sweet. One of the, I think it's the first one, not the answers. You'll notice some music, uh, and I thought, where have I heard that before? And actually, Ed Sweeney uses it quite a lot. It's a kind of, um, it's, it sounds kind of sleazy music. It, it's the first Ladyboy competition, but thinking about it, I thought. You know, because sometimes people leave comments and say, oh, Ed Sweeney uses that or somebody else uses that. But if you go way back on my um, uh, videos, I did one on the Pat Pong Museum when I was there in December. And the background music on the Pat Pong Museum when I was in there filming was actually this music on the Ladyboy competition tonight. So if anybody drops a comment and says, oh, you've nicked Ed Sweeney, I haven't. I used it before him, actually. But, you know, it's YouTube. We all share. We all use it. Um Yeah, okay, somebody else saying definitely not Thai girls. But, you know, they're pretty. It's just about a pretty minute of girls, isn't it? Um, <laughs> that's it. Get, get into the spirit of things, JB. That's nicer. Don't – come on, guys. Don't sl don't don't slate me, you know, over what where they come from. You know, it's it's just for fun. Right. Uh, Paul Shackenden just popped away for a minute. Did I miss anything? Yeah, the Monga Minute, Paul. Right, Marky Mark. Yummy, yummy. Uh, I'll take any one of those to go. Yeah, okay. Uh Yeah, Jason Finch, PE, you should bring of girls on your show. Right, well, here I'll tell you what, you say that. Here's something I've got planned. Do you know the girl who comes in quite often called, I call her Sheila, that's not a real name. Let me just, before, I'm going to leave your comment up there because I want to answer. I just want to say hi to, uh, thank you to, is it Nalogs2? Uh, hi, Peter, thank you for another uh, Friday Night Live. Yeah, thank you, Nalogs2, for the super chat there. I do appreciate that. And there's another one there from regular Angels Cabal. Uh, Monga Minute was marvellous. I'll put that on again at the end, uh, Angels Cabal. I don't want to lose the comment as I forget what I'm talking about. But for you two guys, thank you very much for that. Uh, straight into the booze fund, as it were. Um, right, Jason Pitch, you should... Right, okay, let me talk about this. You should bring on one of the girls on the show. Right, the girl I call Sheila, she comes in. Uh, she's she's actually... Um, I can't tell you what she does for a living, but she's she's a professional. And I don't mean in that way. You know, she's not, she doesn't work in Patia. Here in the UK, okay? Um, she's actually, uh, how do I, I don't, I can't give the, I don't want to give her away because she's got quite a powerful job, right? Uh, quite, a, she's very educated, got quite a powerful job and she's in, she's got a Thai girlfriend. Okay. And she's a lot of fun. I think she's about 30, you know, she comes in here and she drops comments. She's answered you. She's spoken to you, Clive, and she's spoken to a few people and she come in, she's not in tonight, but she has come in. She sent me her phone number and I want to bring her on here, not on a live stream, maybe on a video and do an interview with her and just talk about her going to Thailand because she's she's loves the manga minute you know she's female but she loves them she's like when's the manga minute coming on so that's fair enough um but the problem is because of her job and, and the other thing is she's got a real heavy Scottish accent right she lives up in Scotland so you know it's and and because of her real name and it's going to be really hard to disguise her so she's I said to her well, maybe you could wear a mask or something so I might bring her on here with a mask you know because she can't risk her colleagues at work um you know, seen it, but I, certainly when I go out to Thailand, I do, I do uh, plan to uh, come up with some of that sort of stuff because you know everything you see me doing here. I'm in the UK. I did a few videos when I was out in Thailand, December 15, to be accurate. Um, but you know, I'm limited what I can do. When I get out there, the sky's the limit, isn't it? Okay, the Wu Tang life. Most of the young girls are currently back in the villages. Lots of older girls working right now in the bars right now. The video show it's very slow. Well, I'm an old guy, so I don't mind. Uh, Canary spreads his wings. Hooters girls have a have big hooters. You think, Peter? Well, you know, Asians, they you know they they don't generally have them, do they? Okay. Aaron says, uh, buzzing. Trevor said it's really quiet at the moment. I'm surprised at that because Trevor normally sort of, um, you know, he's promoting Patty, isn't he? I, I I I didn't think it would be that quiet. Um, right. Uh, World travel forever. Patty looked busy in January because all the action was in Soy Bacal. Yeah, okay. When I was there, um, when, when I was there, that buzzing bar wasn't open yet. We used to go to the uh, 
the American, is it Danny, the sports bar? I don't know if you guys know that. It's kind of quite close to Trevor's bar or the one that he got his name on. And uh, it's Danny's, I can forget the name of the bar, but we used to go there with Trevor's Discord group. And uh, we went there nearly every night, actually. Uh, 20, 30 guys, you know, and uh, yeah, a lot of fun. Okay, um, right. Donald Person, the girls from Hong Kong and Japan look pretty nice to me, yeah. Nick T, uh, did you say you put up a North Korean girl last week, Peter? So you have South Korean wife and North Korean lodger. I, I, I'll tell you a funny story. I know you joke, but I'll tell you a funny story. When my wife was in Korea, um, she went to visit one of her Korean friends around Soy 24 or something like that. And her Korean friend had a North, I don't know how she managed to employ her, but she had a North Korean maid. So this uh, girl had come from North Korea. Uh, you know, I've never asked my wife that because I thought North Koreans couldn't go out the country. I know North Korea sends out construction workers to certain places and they don't get all their money. It goes back to North Korea, doesn't it? But uh, I don't know how it worked. I can't tell you. But I can, all I can tell you is that my wife went to see her friend and her friend had a North Korean living maid. And my, friend, my wife said to me, without she wasn't taking the mickey. She just said it was so funny to listen to her talk. And I was like, well, why? And she was like, how how she talks is how we used to talk, you know, like 80 years ago, 70 years ago. You know, in the UK, when you watch a play and they're talking like ye old house over on yonder hill. You know, if somebody spoke like that now, you know, can you get me ye old taxi to go on yonder pub? You know, it sound like funny, wouldn't it? Um, but that's how they talk. So for the Koreans, the South Koreans, they talk one way. And although they understand each other, the North Koreans have got this very old dialect. And when South Koreans hear it, it sounds really kind of, yeah, like I've just explained to you, you know, like how we, in Victorian times, how we we spoke completely different back then. We didn't speak, I mean, obviously I wasn't alive back then, but, you know, we I know that it was a different dialect back in the Victorian times to what we speak today. And that's that's how it was when my wife listened to that. And she, she just found it really comical. Um, right, James Casey, I once thought I'd treat myself to a massage happy ending on Christmas Day. Just at the peak, my mum rang me to wish me happy Christmas. Do you know what? that's that's too crazy to be not true? I, I do believe that, uh, James. I hope I hope. Um, well, I, I don't know how to say it in a polite way, but I hope you uh, you know well, at least you got your Christmas pud. Right? Okay. Um, Boohoo says January, February, March are unbearable on in Ontario. Anywhere, anywhere. I mean, you want to come to the UK, Boohoo? The weather's. You know, why do you think we talk about the weather? Okay, in the UK. I mean. They didn't tell me it was going to be the summertime last Wednesday. I mean, no, I mean we've had a lot of uh, we've had a lot of hot weather uh, recently. We, we were ten degrees hotter than Bangkok a couple of weeks ago. I looked at the weather forecast. Bangkok was twenty nine degrees, and uh, London was um, what were we forty one degrees. And we don't have aircon here for the biggest part of it because we don't need it. It was it was relentless. You couldn't get away from it. You know, when you're in Thailand and it's very hot and you think, oh god, I just got to get out of this heat. You can go back to your hotel strip off and lay on the bed in the air con you can even if you know you can pop into a 7-eleven get a drink and it's always cold air in 7-eleven but you know it was relentless and it, it was actually horrible really horrible um kev12364 peter 64 years old quote with 133,896 thai bar health insurance with pacific cross right well i might i might I, i've had a rethink on this now because you know i've been harping on about pacific cross for a long time my friends sign they, they would the coverage I need would be about a hundred pounds a month, four thousand baht, which if you're on a budget is quite a lot. And I spoke to my friend yes, my friend Simon yesterday, and he's just taken out some insurance with a company called, I think they're called AIA, and they're supposedly the biggest insurance company in Thailand. They've got Western speaking. Um, you know, if you want if you're interested, I haven't got the number yet, but if you're interested, their reps will come out and meet you, speak English, and he he's insured his whole family. Uh, but he's told me for him alone, um, for the treatment that he'd get, you know, cancer, 6,000 baht a day for a hotel room, everything. I think he said he's paying 2,500 baht a month. And that that really interests me because 2,500 baht a month is much more appealing than uh, 4,000 baht a month. So I don't know yet. I've got to, you know, when I get out there now, even though I'm not going out there to live full time, I'm going to be, this is, this is the sort of things I'm going to be looking into. Um, right, Mark Finley says, no free speech here. Okay, I don't know what that means. But I'll just put that up. I've already said thank you, Angel Scabel, uh, but I'll put it up uh, anyway. And I'll also put that one up. I've also said thank you to you, Noel Logs, I think it is too. Uh, but I'll put it up, right? Kay Jensen. Uh, I was in Patu in July, first time, 
And if that is if that is very few tourists, and I would not like to be there when a lot of tourists, crazy city, not for a six-year-old. Um, well, you know what? Um, it can get very busy in Pattaya. But I know what you mean, but not for a six-year-old. I, I can hack Pattaya. I, I'm booked in to stay in a hotel near Nick Dean's Bar uh, in October. I'm going to stay, spend four or five nights in Pattaya. Then I'm going down to uh, Bangkok. Then I'm, I'm going down to Pattaya for six days. I, I often go to I, – I mean, it's not my favorite place in the world, but the reason I go down there – is because I want to see what's happening. You know, I've got a YouTube channel called Thailand Ban. It's not about just Bangkok. I'm basing myself in Bangkok. But when I go there this time, again, like the last time, I'll be based in Bangkok. I'm going to Pattaya for six days. I'm going to do Hua Hin. I want to do a lot of motorcycling around Hua Hin with a, with, a, with a GoPro. I want to explain. You know, somebody left a comment, where's the best street for bars? I want to ride. I'll do it in the daytime when, I, when you can do it without, you know, people having to not liking you to be filmed. But uh, I'll say, look, I'm on Soy 18 hour. I'll ride down it. And, uh, you know, I'm going to do a road trip from Hohin to Cha'am, which is a beautiful beach town. I'll go to Rayong. And, uh, yeah, I understand what you're saying when you say Patty is not for a six-year-old. I know guys who are 70 and even 80 in, in Patty, and they, they wouldn't go anywhere else. But it is a, it is a bit he hectic. Let me just get rid of this bot. Okay, this seems to be a weekly occurrence now, this guy coming on. Well, it's not a guy, it's a bot. Um, okay, so, Franco, you already spotted him. Good man. Uh, I don't know why they're bothering. I mean, it's not like, like the advert says nude HD XYZ best adult dating. And it's not like everybody's going to leave the stream and say, Wow, let's go on this nude HD XYZ and see if I'm finding a girlfriend. I, I just don't see the point. Um, Cashier says, Rob, Rob, I always get your name wrong, Rob. I'll just call you Rob. Cashier, Rob, what does, what does it for me? It's having to pay double the 2019 prices of mostly older girls, but if it was my first trip, I would probably feel differently. I'll tell you what does it for me. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that. Is it cashier? It's just so bloody expensive. Not, not, Pat, Patty is great, but when I was in Bangkok, um, when, I, when I was in Bangkok, it's so expensive. People say to me, well, it doesn't have to be. You can eat noodles on the street or do what a Thai does, but you know, you don't go on vacation to live like a Thai, do you? you want to go out to the bars and be entertained and watch pretty girls and go for nice meals and things like that? And it's just so damn expensive in Bangkok. I mean, you're looking at 180 baht for a small beer, you know, a small Heineken, 160, 180 baht. Ladies drink 200 baht. You know, it's incredibly expensive. Um, you go out to eat and you want a few Thai dishes. You're looking at sort of like 80, 120 baht for a dish upwards, you know. So you order three or four di dishes with some rice, and a beer, you're paying seven, eight hundred baht for a Thai meal. But the flip side to that coin is when you go down to Patu, it's very, very reasonable. A lot of places to eat, you can still get a decent meal for a couple of hundred baht and less, cheaper. And uh, the other thing is the beers are reasonable, 70 baht, 70, 80 baht. You know, it's just incredibly, ex incredibly expensive in Bangkok now. Um, No, not at all. I had eight guests on last week, Brian. Do you think it would be too hard to have two guests in at once? Trevor, Brian, Dan. So I'll tell you why I'm not keen on it. I mean, I was joking that I did have seven people in last week, right at the end of the Sunday stream. I'm going to go for it this Sunday. I just send a link there. First 10 people that come into the street stream. It's crazy. It's a madhouse. Um, I'll tell you why I'm not keen on having uh, Trevor and Brian, Dan. Firstly, I don't know Dan, okay? I don't know him at all. Um, Brian uh yeah i know brian i know trevor i don't know dan um the problem is when when you've got two people on it, it's coherent so i trev um brian will be on i can ask him some questions he'll start talking i'll shut up okay i'm not one of those guys who brings somebody onto the stream and doesn't let them get a word in like others some people have seen not naming anybody okay um but you know when you've got two people it's coherent so brian will come in and introduce him blah 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 ask him a few questions I want to hear him talking. He's my guest. I'm not the guest. Uh, and then when he goes quiet, I'll ask him something else and bring him out on something else. But when you've got three and even four people, it's not very entertaining because everybody's trying to get their piece in, you know, and everybody's over talking over each other. And it's just it's just not great, to be honest with you. So, no, I think for me personally, one-on-one -on -one is enough. That's enough for me uh, as far as bringing guests in. The thing on Sunday is just a bit of a laugh, you know. I mean, I'm like, right, come in. Everyone comes in, there'll be feedback. You won't be able to hear what anybody's saying because everybody will be talking at once. 
But the great thing is you'll see a bunch of mongers all in. It's just text at the moment. When they come in, you see face. I've seen Clive last week for the first time. I'm like, oh, that's what you look like, Clive. I've seen um, a few guys. You know, it was great. Yours came in. So we'll do that on Sunday. But in answer to your question, uh, no, just a one-on-one -on -one for me. Uh, Mark Hayes says, Peter, all the bars are dead in Patter. I know it's true. My friend lives there uh, because of the cost of living everywhere in the world. That that's a big that's something we're not we haven't spoken about, is it? That's a big um, that's a big part of it, isn't it? Interest rates have gone up, oil and gas is going up. People are struggling now. Uh, people have got a lot less income than they had. Um, a lot less, um, you know, people got a lot of older guys who are on pensions. They might have very good pensions. I'm not talking about state pensions. I'm talking about company pensions, investments, things like that. You know, their money might have gone, uh, would have gone much further before all this crap was going on. Uh, and that is a big part of it, isn't it? The cost of living crisis that's gone on all around the world. Uh, I don't believe it's just down to Ukraine. I mean, uh, COVID, two years, we were at, every country in the world was out of it. Uh, and that, yeah, that, that would affect it big time. Um, you know, it really would. Um, right, JB, uh, Peter, all the, okay, I've read that one. <laughs> yeah, JB, one minute, Peter, I'm just taking a look at a nude adult chat. Yeah. Uh, JB, all, go all good when you're back in Bangkok again. You did tell me before. Yeah, I'm going to be there in October, James, but I'll be really, really busy the first sort of couple of weeks because uh, I've got a lot of people that I've planned to meet, uh, friends actually, because I've got, I have actually got friends there. I don't have too many friends around here. Uh, Frankel's become a friend now. Uh, I've got a few guys I've chatted to on here. Uh, Damien's a very good friend now. He's obviously, Damien's in Thailand now. He'll be back mid September. And I can't wait to hear uh, how he got on after nearly three years. Um, but yeah, James, I mean, look, you know, when I'm living there and I'm settled down, I've got my apartment and I've been there for a while, then, you know, I can do do anything but the, when i first get there again it's believe it or not guys you know i came back in january so what are we now february march april may june july august september it's nearly a year again you know i was out there and it'll be like 10 months before i'm out there again so uh, yeah yeah we'll, we'll hook up one day james uh canary spreads his wings bars are dead because they charge too much supposedly for stlt one of the reasons again that's something else that's very expensive as well hi mark nice to see you just hopped in please to your and ton and friends are here yeah we've uh been gone for nearly two hours now mark good to see you in not a lot left to do uh rob again uh cashier i met up with stunning 22 23 year old the beauties are there and i paid the standard bar fines and drink prices that my friends were paying before the pandemic yeah it's all that it's all there um did i say hi to, did i say thank you dave andrew uh going i don't think i did going to cold chang first of september days from glasgow via dubai to Bangkok, nice quiet island. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Dave, thank you for the. That's a very, very generous super chat. Thank you for that. Um, all right, let's try and get some comments. We haven't had up anyone. Uh, yeah, absolutely, Mark. Mark, I agree with that one. Um, right, Franco de Rosa, Thailand Bank. Can you mention that insurance company for Kev one two three six or? Well, the the insurance company I was talking about for a long time that I've always said I'll go with is is um, I've got the name of it, Pacific Crop, Pacific Cross. But the new company that I'm looking into that Simon's gone with is called AIA, Alpha India Alpha. OK, they're the biggest insurance company in Thailand. They've got English speaking agents. Uh, Simon re recommends them. I don't know. I'm only going on third hand information, but I will look into it and I will talk about it on here when I know more inf information. Uh, Donald uh, Person, your stream is great as it is. You don't need to change anything, but a lady boy interview would be interesting. Uh, yeah, and I'm still going to do the streams when I'm when I go to Bangkok, but obviously the times are going to change, which I hate. When I went for the three weeks last time, it's five weeks. I actually set the clock and got up at three o'clock in the morning, made coffee, four a.m. I went live, which was great for everyone because it was nine p.m. in the UK, but it was so hard. I can't do that for two three months, guys. I can't. I'll try and work something out that's good for everybody. Um, Yeah, I think I said thank you to uh, Franco de Rosa Tonneband. You got a super chat from Dave Andrew. I think I said uh, thank you to David, didn't I? If I didn't, David, who who was the last one I just did? Let's go. Yeah, Dave Andrew, twenty pound. I, I did. Uh, I think I think you put that message up before I actually I read the. I'm a bit behind in the chat. To put it that way. Uh, thank you to everybody who's left super chats. I do really appreciate it. Right, Alexander Dupont. Uh, the Wu Tong life. It was fine when I was there a few weeks ago. Prices are reasonable. I think what you've got to do now when you go to Thailand, you've just got to be a bit more savvy, haven't you? You know, when, you know, five, ten years ago, you go there, you didn't look at prices too much. You just, you want a beer, you order the beer, 
Thai restaurant, you went in and had your fried rice, whatever, burger at the end of the night. You didn't really care. I think now the way that's gone, the Thais as well, I don't want to slate them, but, you know, they do things in a different way, don't they? I mean, you know, if business is bad here for a bar, what they will do, they'll do a two for one or a promotions happy hour or something like that. Over there, it's like, well, we've been closed for two uh, years. We need to get our money back, recuperate. So let's double the prices. I don't know. You tell me. I mean, it's crazy. Uh, right. Let's read one of Paul Hoskins. Out. I haven't read many of his out tonight. Hey, hey, we are the mongers and we like to monger around. That sounds very similar to a 60s band called The Monkees. Right. Um, which is where you got it from, of course. JB, you're right about the cleaning ladies in the malls. They don't understand English often, but they do understand rude hand gestures and, and a wink. Uh, yeah. OK. I haven't got any experience with that sort of thing. So I, I, that's why I finished the comment and say, yeah, OK, because I don't know what else to say. Uh, OK, Mark, you're saying I went there just before COVID. You can never go back to the same. Yeah, it's um, it's still, look, put it this way. Where else can you go? Buy, buy a plane ticket. Uh, be in a paradise like, you know, the beach is there. You've got all them bars, great food, great entertainment, lovely people to spend time with if you get my drift at a great price where you know no right uh no uh no logs uh pre-record to keep the friday night ones going they're a legend now you can work around live show now uh, let me read the whole thing pre-record to keep the live friday ones going they're a legend now you can work around live uh shows as the numbers make business. it wouldn't be the same honestly the whole thing that makes the streams is that they're live if you're saying pre-record the friday night ones it wouldn't work because Firstly, if I get you right, I wouldn't know what to say. I can't keep it going for two hours, three hours and just talk to myself. You know, I mean, I'm feeding off your comments, right? So, you know, like now I've got James, whatever he's saying, I'll read out in a minute. Um, you know, but to pre-record it, I, I, I just couldn't do it. And it wouldn't be the same atmosphere, would it? Uh, James Atkinson, hey, been watching your videos recently. Loads of great stories from your viewers. How much would you say you would need nowadays to go for a week to have a decent time as well and explore? This is... If somebody said to me, what's the most uh, question that gets off the, asked to you the most? It's probably this one. And I'll give you the same answer, James, that I've always said in the past. Uh, but I can't remember the video. Before I give you the answer, I can't remember the video I've done. But there is a video on my channel that gives three levels of spending. So if you're a budget traveler, a middle age traveler, um, middle spend or a high roller, it tells you how much you'd need if you're a budget traveler, how much if you're a middle, uh, you know, uh, halfway and a high roller, but it's a really different, difficult one, James, because it, let me give you an example. If you go there and you stay in a dormitory shared with 10 other guys, uh, you can get a room for eight pound a night if you do that with a locker under the bed. But most people don't want to do that, right? So let's just presume you want to go there. You want to stay in a, maybe a budget hotel. You're looking at that 800 to 1200 baht a night, depending on where it is. Patio, it'll be cheaper, maybe four, 500, 600. Um, I think the biggest thing that cuts into anybody's budget is a ladies drinks and female company right if you don't do ladies drinks and female company you can get by on very little and have a good time not stupid very little but you can get by on very little but once you start entertaining the ladies that that's where you need to really double and even triple your budget but uh sorry i can't remember the name of the video but there is a video out there which is uh, can give you a lot of good information um corporate muck mahon peter you mentioned it before thailand best test no Cambodia, Vietnam, Philippines, etc. Infrastructure, security, food, etc. Yeah, yeah. I mean, absolutely. There are look. You know, you there's there's good points on many different countries. And as an example, if you go to the Philippines, they all speak very, very good English, which they don't in Thailand because it's not in the curric curriculum. They don't teach it in all the state schools, whereas they do in in the Philippines. Okay, so you go anywhere in the Philippines, uh, they all speak very, very good English. So that's a good point, but. They don't have the infrastructure. You know, there's there's a lot of things they don't have that Thailand has. You, you go to Thailand, you know, the roads are good. They've got the BTS. They've got the MRT. They've got uh, the bars are great. The hotels are great. The female company is great. Uh, it's just, It just pushes all the right buttons. You know, I mean, no, apparently Siam Reap. I haven't been to Siam Reap, but Ed Sweeney swears by Siam Reap. He, he, I have been to Cambodia, the capital, but I haven't been to Siam Reap. Vietnam is a place I'm, I am going to go and visit. But when I live in Bangkok and get a 40, 50, dollar flight to vietnam no point in going from here uh, but yeah absolutely uh, did i see young uh, young man called andrew hammond there there he is very late into the stream forgot the time what have i missed everything andrew everything you mi you missed this <laughs>
There you go, Andrew. That was just for you. Right. Before we go into the Ladyboy competition, I want to say hi to Ian150. So talking about budgets, you're saying start at 30,000 Thai baht per week and go from there. Yeah, absolutely. It is. If you get a nice girl to live with, it can be a lot cheaper because you can buy food from, and I, I do mean a nice girl, you know, not somebody who's going to be constantly asking you for money to support her. Um, but, you know, you, you can buy food from the supermarket then. She can cook for you in your apartment. Uh, when you're out and about, if you get a nice girl, good girl, then she'll negotiate. You don't even have to deal with taxis, tuk tuk. She just, you know, if you're going to the MBK Centre, for instance, you just tell your governor, uh, we're going to MBK, can you grab a taxi? And then you jump in and she's, you don't even talk to the taxi driver, right? He'll put the meter on. Um, so that's yeah, a good starting budget. You won't live like a king on 30,000 baht. But if you live in a place in like uh, Hua Hin or a Pinisan or something, you, you can live. Um, while you're there, Ian, somebody was asking me my favorite stories of all time. And, uh, you know, because there's so many up on the channel, they're top five. And I think my second favorite one, to be honest with you, is a, a story got sent in to me by, uh, I think I called the girl Om. And uh, that was a very, very good story, very honest story. And I really enjoyed it. That was a story about the girl in Phuket who'd been there for eight years. And then the guy actually went there and discovered that she'd been working for eight years. He didn't know. He didn't know what to do. He was confused. Uh, but I'll tell you what, I released a video last week. I've put a link in the description. It's doing so well. It's called Patia Thailand, a bar girl story. It's about a, a girl called Lek. It, a lot of detail. And her husband also contributes towards the story. It's it's very, very good. And uh, if you have, I think you have seen that one, Ian. Um, well, that's doing very well. Oh, he's back again. Hang on, nude HD. Right, okay. Uh, Mortimer... Mortimer Duke, that's a very upmarket name, isn't it? Mortimer Duke, how are you? Right, for the best Friday night entertainment, oh, thank you, Mortimer, and thank you for the uh, the $10. That, that'll go. That'll get me eight cans of uh, the beer. Lovely. Right, guys, uh, let's see how many disappear now. 448 in, according to my numbers. Let's do a couple more of these, and we'll go ladyboy competition. We want some right answers tonight. Uh, right, uh, Nalogs 2 again. Thank you for the reply, Peter. I agree, they won't be the same, but if you can't do them every Friday, have a video for us, even a weekly... Uh, well, at the moment, look in the logs. Like, I do the stories every Saturday. There's six stories going to be released tomorrow morning, as always. Um, at the moment, guaranteed live stream on a Friday night. Uh, and if I feel like doing one on a Sunday, which normally I do one on a Sunday night. So when I go to Thailand, I'm going to keep this format. Uh, but I'm also going to add a lot more in. There'll be sort of motorcycle rides, um, you know, hotel reviews, stuff like that. And there'll be guys who, who come on and think, well, I don't want to look at this hotel room. You know, it's boring. I just want to see things like the Monga Minute and stuff like that. That's fair enough. But then I'll, I should be able to grab another audience, people who aren't interested in all this kind of stuff, but they're interested in, um, you know, uh, rooms and stuff. Right. Let me, let's have a change. Um, let's have a look. Which one should we do? Um, these are last week's, but it's okay. Let's put that one again. Right. Okay. Um, do you know what, guys? I think it's that time. Right, I'm just going to reiterate this point. The music that I'm, I'm going to do the Ladyboy competition now. The the the, the sleazy music. Uh, I haven't pinched it from Ed Sweeney. I've actually used it on my Pat Pong Museum video last year. So I I, I used it once, okay, uh, and I used it this time. And I, I heard it. I thought, where have I heard that before? But I, I have used it, okay. So right, you know the game, guys. It's the Ladyboy competition. I just want to know which number eight pictures. Which number is a Ladyboy, okay? Um, the, sorry, I said that wrong. I'm getting confused now. There's eight pictures. One of them is a real lady, a, a real woman. The, the, the other seven are lady boys. And the, the aim of the competition, just tell me which number is the, re, the real female, okay? So I hope it's a bit easier this week. Here we go.
Okay, here we go. I'll put the answers up in a minute. Let's see who's got it right. Let's see who's got it wrong. Who's the first one? Paul Shackleton. <laughs> okay. Uh, Martin Ryder, well done. First one is the right answer. World Traveller Forever, no. Ricky Woolley, no. Mark P, no. William Sullivan, no. Chris J. Uh, hi, Chris. How are you doing? No. Uh, Lewis, no. Javier, no. Uh, Aya Manouts, is it? Yeah, well done. You got it. Paul Shackleton, no. Actually, the dog, no. Real Rini, uh, no. Brian Street, no. Brian's not very lucky in these competitions, mate. Uh, Ho Nat Juan, is it? Uh, no. Alexander the Great, yes. You got it. Well done. James Casey, no. Um, Corporate McMahon, uh, number five's got manly hands. All right. Uh, Mark Hanley, no. Richard Meller, yeah, you got it. Well done. Steve White, no. John Paul, no. Tilt, yes, you got it. Uh, McLaren, Clive, no. Pesky McNuggets, no. Leeds, no. Brian Street, again, no. Marky Mark, uh, have you got a right one, Mark? I can't, I've lost you. No. Uh, hang on, where are I? Marky Mark, no, you haven't. Sean T, yeah, well done, mate. Uh, Franco De Rosa, uh, yeah, good guess, Franco. Uh, Richard Songer, no. Ben Dover, yeah, yes. Uh, Mark, uh, sorry, mate, not this time. Jolly Fox, yes. James Atkinson, no. Robert, no. Andy Holmes, no. Andrew Hammond, Andrew, you should have got it, but you got it. No, I'm worried about you. Got to keep an eye on you when we get to Patia. Uh, Clive Allen, no. Silver Fox, no. Peter Parker, no. Uh, Bottle Baby, no. Richard Miller, no. Craig, yes. James Everett, no. Neil M. Uh, I'm just looking at the numbers to see how many I've lost, but there are actually people are staying at the moment. Right, John, John's Garage, no. Only in Tyler, no. Uh, are you a mechanic by any chance, John? Uh, no name, no. Aaron73, yeah, you got it. Cashier, we'll start getting all the right answers in a minute now, won't we? Uh, David Heidelberg, uh, look like Russell. Yes, David, well done. Alex, no. Simon Goodson, no. Lester Paul, no. Uh, Deke the Trucker, no, D, you haven't got it. You better watch it around them lady boys. Uh, Leroy, uh, no. Kay Jensen, no. Tony Foley, no. Nick Simpson, yes. Matthew Allen, yes. Well done. Dutch Frank, FFA, don't know what that means. Tony7682, yes. Tom, no. Frank Sin Sinatra, four. E, uh, I need to give it away there, didn't I? Yes. Mike Sands, yes. Eric Wright, I'm just going to give the right answers now, guys, because a lot, a lot of answers. We're going to whiz through this and I'll put the answer up right. Uh, only right answers. Daniel, yes. Uh, who else? Where are we? I've got quite a lot of uh, right answers. No, we haven't. I'm just trying to find some right answers here. Uh, nearly there. Right, yeah. Jan K, you got it. Right, okay, guys. That's about it. I think that's the last right one. Um, I just want to say thank you again to... Uh, uh, I think that's twice you've done that tonight, Marlon. Uh, super sticker. Thanks. Thank, thank you very much for that. Right. Okay. Let's put you out of your misery. Let's give you the right answer. Uh, which one was the real lady and which one were lady boys? So here is the answers. The answer. I'll be honest with you guys, right? I was a little bit naughty this week because number one, I knew a lot of guys would get caught out by number one. And uh, when I actually seen that, I thought, really? Uh, but yeah, there you go. I'm just, I'm seeing something I'm not seen before. Uh, okay. I don't know what that is. Let me just, uh, bear with me guys, stick with it. Right. Okay. Uh, right. We'll do a few more comments. We've been going for over two hours now, guys. Uh, I really mean it tonight. It's not going to be a long one tonight, guys, because I've got to take my daughter to work in the morning. I've got two more streams this week. I love doing it. I could keep drinking. I could keep reading out comments. We could do it all again, uh, but I'll be I'll be absolutely shattered tomorrow. So let me do some more comments, uh, and then we can uh, we can all meet up again on Sunday with Brian. Right. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, Wayne M. That was as she said. Uh, yeah, Richard, uh, you're still giving <laughs> you're still giving out the answers. Um, uh, Leroy 420, not rats, human. Okay. 
The Wutong life, chicks with Thai sausage. Oh, yeah. Paul Hoskin, once I take my glasses off, it's Russian roulette. Uh, K. Jensen, scary. I've taken part in this competition 10 times and never guessed it. Thank God it's easy. Now, it is easy in real life because they they exaggerate. They talk like, oh, you know, oh, that was a bad impression of a lady boy. But, you know, and you, they got big hands, big feet. You know, some of them are, they, you know, they look, they do look like females, but you, you won't get caught out. Yeah, Mark, that was a tough one. Uh, Matthew Allen. Okay. <laughs> right. Uh, okay, let me read a couple out I haven't. Uh, read out James accident. Oh, laugh out loud. I got wrong because I thought I was looking for a lady boy. Oh, well, you would have got the right answer then because there were seven of them there. Um, uh, right, Mark says, Peter, you're wrong. Give me a clue, Peter. Put me out of my misery. I'm wrong about what? Uh, you probably, if you're saying I'm wrong about the real lady, no, absolutely not because I'm really, really careful about where I get the pictures from, right? So I only need to get uh one female okay so i make sure when i go for the female pictures i get them from one place and i actually go to ladyboy sites they're actually called i'm not going to tell you the name of the sites but they're actually their sites where people go because they like looking at ladyboy so i can't i don't make a mistake and um you know i don't know if you're trying to wind me up or you really think i was but mark i can guarantee you 100 uh, i'll put money on it I'm, I'm not wrong mate honestly right um Okay, uh, Mark P. Oh well, I'd still bar find mine. All right, uh, old Foggy. Don't don't worry about it. Old is it? Am I saying that right? Old Foggy. Oh no, it's not Foggy, is it? Old Four G. I can't. I get it wrong. Don't worry about it. Um, okay, Javier, you're a very cheeky Peter. Yeah. Uh, okay. Dutch Frank says, Peter, you always say that we are looking for, but when it starts, I always forget of we looking for lady boy or lady. No, but I I, I make it really clear, Dutch Frank. I, I always say there's eight pictures. Seven of them are lady boys. And the, the answer I'm looking for is a lady. I want to know who the real lady is. And that's what I said again tonight. After the stream, if you rewind it, you'll hear me say that. I'm not trying to be arrogant or, you know, I'm never wrong. But I, I do because I am aware, even after a few beers, that the competition has to be understood properly. So I don't want to make any mistakes or to confuse guys. Some people just get confused anyway. But if you if you do listen to that, I always say there's eight pictures, seven are lady boys. I'm looking for the lady. Tell me which number is the lady. All right. Um, Wayne Ellis and Patty are dreaming. Where can I get a lady boy radar? Radar. Yeah. <laughs> I, you, you don't need one, honestly. You, you'll spot them. Uh, let me go down to some of the later comments here. Uh, Ian 150 says, I'll stick with number one. Absolutely. Right. Um, okay, Mark. Yes, I'm still working. Uh, Jeff Fried Rice. The only time I had to the right to right answer, I didn't guess and put the answer out on the Ladyboy competition. All right. Uh, it's just for fun anyway, guys, isn't it? It's not, you're not going to get tripped up when you go out there. Okay, James Kevin, over and out. Good night, gentlemen. Yeah, thanks, thanks for coming in, James. Thanks for the super chats and everything. And uh, hopefully you'll join us if you if you haven't already gone. Hopefully you'll join us on Sunday. Uh, right, we're nearly there, guys. Let me just go down to a few newer comments. Uh, Eric Whitfield says, if I can get your comment to show, it's easy to it's easy to tell. Uh, I think you mean make female. No, you meant to say fake. It's easy to tell fake females. A male's ring finger is longer than the index finger, whereas a female, the index finger is longer than the ring finger. That was hard to read at this time of night with a few beers, but you are right because I have heard that before. Uh, right, James again. Uh, you look quite young, James. I'd love to know how old you are. I mean, I don't know if it's an old photograph. Maybe it was taken 40 years ago. I don't know. But you look like quite a young man there. Uh, what if you go there or and do come across a lady boy, but you're not sure, are you allowed to ask him? Uh, yeah, you are, Mark. You can do it in a kind of discreet way. You know, you can kind of say, you can joke with her and say, are you are you a real lady or a lady boy? Like that. I mean, if you ask outright, like really serious, are you a lady boy? You might offend them, but, you know, they don't really mind. You know, if you're not sure, you can say, are you a lady or a lady boy? You know, and smile. They'll, they'll tell you that if it's a lady boy, she'll go, oh, really high pitch and put on these dramatics. That's it. Uh, where you can, uh, you know, she should get an Oscar. But you, you, you know what, Mark, it, uh, James, if you're not sure, you know the best thing to do and they won't lie to you. If you're in a bar, just when the person you're talking to goes to the toilet, just get one of the bar girls, just say, is it a lady boy or lady? And she'll tell you straight and she won't tell her. Uh, and she'll say, no, it's a lady boy or it's a, it's a girl. Right. Um, 
Uh, Mark says, Peter, I thought you stopped working and I'm moving to time. I am, Mark, but I've got to sell my house. And I'd, I'd had some buyers. They just dropped out. It's getting complicated. I've put it multi-agency now. Uh, I'm going out in October for two or three months because I don't need to be here. I don't work now. And, uh, you know, that that's it. I, I, until the house goes, I can't do anything. I'm trapped. Colonel Abrams. Remember that? Trapped. Right. Wayne Ellis and Patty Dreaming. Uh, the voice is often the biggest giveaway for a lady boy. Lot, lots of giveaway. Big feet, big hands. Apples, Adams. They always have massive coconuts. You know, they have the, the you know, they have the um, the implant. But, ah, you know, that was one of the biggest things I noticed this trip. You know, I've been going to Thailand for three decades. And this last trip in December, one thing I really noticed that was different to any other time I've been there, or I can't say all, a lot of the bar girls have had boob jobs. You know, it used to be the odd one, but a lot of them. Now, you go into a bar, I'd say out of 20, you don't get 20. Say you go in a beer bar, there's 10 girls. I'd say eight have had boob jobs, you know. Uh, Paul Shackleton says, Peter, my travel insurance is costing me more than my flight. Please do a video about travel insurance for those with pre-existing conditions. Um, Paul, let me, I, I, what I'll do, Paul, let me put my, you can, I'm not going to leave this up for a long time. Let me put my email address up here. Okay. You can rewind it later if you need to. Look, you didn't see me pull that sneaky one while the Lady Boy competition was on. If it's not too personal, and anybody can write to me. Um, if it's not too personal, write to me and just tell me what your condition is, and I'll try and help you out, okay? I, I don't mind doing stuff like that. Some some people take the piss a little bit. You know, I've had people write to me and say, I'm going to Thailand in this state. Can you tell me what ta how much I should pay the taxi? Can you recommend me a hotel? Which bar should I go out to? Where's the best three restaurants in Bangkok and Patty? And it's like I'm bloody travel agent. You know, I'm like, well, look it up on Google, you know. Um Right, Baz 69er. Many years ago, I did a visa run and was given only 15 days. I was well pissed off. The immigration guy was shouting at me, new rules, new rules. I didn't argue with him, laugh out loud. Yeah, well, they're not so um, not so bright to do that these days, are they? Apparently, from other people on the stream, because I was, I was a bit confused, the 15-day uh, visa exempt stamp that you get in your passport. Now, that's only for certain countries, China, India, that sort of thing. Um, if you're coming from uh, a lot of countries now, it's 30 days. But if you're late into the stream or you haven't heard about it, on the 1st of October, they will automatically grant. If you come from a country that gives you, um, where they give you 30 days, and again, I'll, I'll repeat myself, it's not a visa, it's a visa-exempt tourist stamp, okay? If you if you come from a country that you automatically get 30 days at the airport, from the, they're doing a promotion for six months, from the 1st of October, you will get 45 days, okay? And that makes a big difference, you know, four weeks as opposed to... Um, what's that? Six weeks? I don't know. Um, you know, so you'll you'll automatically get that. The, the two week thing apparently is um, you know, from certain countries. Like I just want, I'm just reading James's on the side. I want to see what he says. Old photos, haha. -ha. That photo was when I was 18, 29. Now, I wish I was still that young. Look, James, you are real young. A lot of the guys in here are 60 plus. Not all. We get a, a good mix of people in here. We get several females coming to the stream. Francesca in Bangkok comes in. Sheila comes in, one or two others, uh, I guess one or two of the Gambian sausage ladies who come in. And, uh, you know, we, we've had young guys in before, uh, 20, 30, 40. Uh, it's just, a, you know, if you enjoy it, why not? Good to have you in the stream. It's, it's nice to have you in, James, really. Right. Um, uh, old Fog. I'm going to call you Old Foggy. It looks like Old Foggy. I asked the lady if she was a lady boy, and she said I could touch her to check. Yeah, absolutely. They they do say that. Um, I, I've uh, what who Jay uh, was it Alexander that who asked me? Uh, yeah, James. Sorry, let me just put your name up there. You asked me earlier if you're not sure, can you ask them? Well, if they are a lady boy, uh, they won't get offended. But I tell you, the ladies do get a little bit offended. So if it's a if it's a girl and you say, "Are you lady boy?" and she's a real lady, she yes, they can get upset. So. What you might be better to do is asking one of the other girls in the bar, but the lady boys definitely won't get offended. Um, look, I, I'm going to stop talking about lady boys now because it's like I'm, a, I'm like some kind of an expert on lady boys, and I'm not. It's just you know when you when you live in a place for a long time and you see what goes on, you kind of become a a non, a kind of little bit of an expert on everything, but I'm not a total expert on any one thing, and it's just observations. From going around the bars but i'm certainly not an expert and i want to move on from the the lady boy talk now because it, it, it's almost as if i'm uh you know 
Right, Yoss Travels. I use uh, I use Stay Sure. It's great for people with medical insurance, but 60 days is the longest trip you can do with them. I have six medical insurance, £300 a year, but fully covered. Uh, well, or, or, yeah, um, you've got to look around yours, haven't you, Steve? You've got to look around. Um, when you're in Thailand, it's a whole different ball game. For people who have gone out the long term, like myself, there, there are a lot more options. Um, Canary spreads his wings. Why do Cambodia charge to get into the country? Yeah, I mean, that's a con, isn't it? I remember years ago, a friend of mine took me to Cambodia. He says, make sure you have two passport photographs. Because if you didn't have two, pa I can't remember, it could have been $10. But if you arrive and you give them two passport photographs, they look pissed off, right? Because if you arrive with no passport photograph, they used to say, well, you've got to give us $10. You give them $10, you can go in, right? But, you know, I think that $10 went straight in their pocket. Um, yeah, I mean, look, in answer to your question, Canary spreads its wings. Why do Cambodia charge to get into the country and Thailand does not? Thailand is a much more richer country than Cambodia, okay? Uh, and I'm sure the guys who are sitting in the airport in Cambodia are not getting paid anywhere near what the guys are getting paid in, in, in Thailand. Um, okay. Uh, Zeke Man Eats 49 here, all right? Uh, no name. Uh, nice. I can stay 35 days now, not worry about a day with. Yeah, somebody sent me a message yesterday actually and said, Look, I'm going to Thailand, but my the way the ticket works out, I'm going to be there for 32 days. What do you think I should do? And I said to him, Don't. Um, <clears throat> he's been advised by some people, it's only two days. Uh, you'll get fined. Don't worry about it. But what I would say to that is, Don't be fined. Uh, don't. People have got this argument, right? They'll say, you know, in the old days, I'm talking about real old days, if you overstayed, it was 500 baht a day or something you had to pay. So if you overstayed by two weeks, that's 14 days. So you paid 7,000 baht and you're on your way. There was no record of it, really. There was no problem with it. Um, and people sort of still kind of advise people, don't worry about it. But the way I look at it now, you know, Thailand's really up on their systems. And I said to the guy, I said, look, if you're going to stay for 32 days, I know it's going to sound like a waste of money, but extend your visa. It's only two days. It's going to cost you 5,000 baht, 5,500 baht, but you're going to leave the country clean. And what I mean by that is if you overstay, even by a day, you're going to go on a database, okay? And if you accidentally have a problem, that your flight gets missed or something like that, and you do it again, you're just asking for trouble, aren't you? I, I play it safe. If I was two days over the 30 days, I would extend. I don't care about the money. I'm not rich, but I would do it because I want to leave clean, come back into the country when they pop that screen up, it's got my passport details and no observations. That's just me. Right, uh, guns and plebs. Uh, good to have you in, mate. Uh, a bit late tonight, uh, but good to have you in. I'm 18. Oh, you're 18? Okay, I'm, I'm 18. I've been watching the streams and stories for at least a couple of... I, I must be like your dad, right, with all this grey hair, and you must like look at some of these comments of these guys and say, Jesus Christ, what sort of place is this? But yeah, fair play to you, fair play. Good to have you in. Right, um... Uh, Okay, I didn't realize there were so many young guys in here. CE 7730 here. I'm probably like that uh, wise old man, aren't I? You know, who sits in the rocking chair giving out advice. And people think, well, he must know what he's talking about because he's uh, been there for so long. Right. Um, okay, Matthew Cartwright. Where have you been, Matthew? Here we go. Mr. Stark, you missed the entire stream, Matthew. Um, right, okay. Rant and rave. Oh, hang on. Let me just get rid of the bot again. He's back. He's gone. Right. Okay. Rant and Rave 30. If you want to check if a lady or lady boy, then say you look very young. Can I see your ID card? Yeah, but you know, that doesn't work. You know, it's like I made a video once about when you go into a bar. Uh, it doesn't happen nowadays, but in the old days, sometimes you've got younger girls in the bars working. They could be like 16, for instance, and you get caught. Um, you know, I, I've got to be careful what I say here now. Um, let, let's just say if you want to uh, let rewind, forget I said that, right? If you were in a bar and you wanted to check somebody's age for whatever reason, older or younger, if she wants you to believe that she's a certain age, um, an ID is not the hardest thing to get in the world. You go to Mabu Kong and you'll see boards like driving license, uh, you know, passport this. I, I, they do all these fake certificates, license, all these plastic cards, you know. So um, I wouldn't rely on that. Go with your gut instinct, probably better. Um Yeah, you've just, you just reiterated what I've just said, Dutch Frank. Absolutely. I'm glad you put that up there because it's just basically confirmed what I was just saying. <clears throat> um, Nalogs, I have just noticed, I always tell you, not that I have tried. <laughs> okay, it's all coming out now, isn't it? Uh, Christ, let me just get by all this bloody nude HDXYT. Right. Um, 
Hi, Capiel. Thanks for that. Um, Sunday, 4.30, Brian, I think Brian's spoken to you already, okay? Uh, you'll, you've got a green spanner now. I don't know. You probably can see it now. Uh, you, you can help Frank on now. I'm, I'm nearly done and dusted tonight, uh, Capiel. Good to see you in. Uh, thank you for becoming a new member. I'm really looking forward to uh, Sunday because I think we're going to be discussing trolling and armchair critics, uh, idiots, and mental cases who do nothing but go onto YouTube and criticize other people. Um, I think you're familiar with a few names, right? And we're going to make a meal of it. Uh, but yeah, good to have you in. Uh, nearly done now, but uh, Sunday's going to be a good one, hopefully. I'll, I'm going to call Brian again tomorrow, I think. Right. Um, there you go, uh, Mark. Uh, yes, Capio, mate. Okay. Right. I'll oh, bomb. Uh, Peter, do you know someone who is was in a long time relationship with a lady boy? Uh, relationships seem to not hold on long. Okay, Al Bomb, I'll take a wild punt here. I'm, I'm not taking the Mickey, okay? Uh, yeah. Um, I'm going to assume that you like lady boys, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, uh, people do people do have that tendency. People do fall in love with all sorts of different people. And uh, if, if you are into lady boys and you're looking for a serious relationship, there's nothing wrong with that. Who am I or anybody else to judge if you're not hurting anybody? But yeah. Uh, absolutely in Thailand there are a lot of people in long-term relationships with lady boys um, I can't think of anything to criticize it it's between the person having the relationship and the lady boy they have to work it out just the same as some guy who hooks up with a bar girl you know there's things you've got to look out for there's things they might do that a normal girl wouldn't do um, they've got the hormones of a man haven't they they might look like a lady but there's going to be certain traits that are different to if you were with a female if you know what I mean so in answer to your question, uh, one, again, I'm assuming that that's the sort of thing you'd be interested in. So in answer to your question, I would say if that is what you're interested in, that's what you're looking to do. Um, I would say, firstly, don't pick up anybody outside Nana Plaza. Don't, um, you know, go to any entertainment zone and try and get a long term relationship with a lady boy, um, you know, who, who's kind of working because it will be like hell on earth. What I would say to you is. Uh, there are a lot of lady boys who hold down regular jobs. <clears throat> you can go into certain hairdressers, uh, nail bar sort of places, even the malls. You go around the malls, you'll see, uh, you know, they're not all camp, long haired, big boobed, exaggerating, uh, you know, performers almost, you can say. You know, a lot of the malls you go around, you'll see lady boys who are working, who are obviously lady boys just by their style, but they're normal people working in a normal job. And I, I would say to you, not being an expert myself, but I would say to you, if you are into it and that's what you're looking for, I would say that would probably be your best place to try and look for somebody uh, and just try to develop a relationship like you would in your own country. Uh, you know, it's no different to your own country. You know, wine, dine. Do you get on with a person that they like you? Do you like them? That sort of thing. OK, um, I, I took a long time to answer that because I think it's a very important. It was a good question. Very important to answer it in the right way. And, uh, you know, I, I don't want people to judge people who come into the stream like this. Right. OK. Uh, only in Thailand again. Yours travels. I looked to stay short sure insurance this week, but the reviews were not good. So it put me off them. OK. I wish I'd have started this. Um, uh, thank you, Capio. Uh, I've been lurking. Good stream. You're probably a bit like me. When I go into other people's streams, I was watching Brian Flowers stream uh, on. When did he do it? What's today? Friday. Day. I think he did it on. Was it Wednesday? Uh, I was there and I watched the whole stream and it was great. Uh, Brian's a very knowledgeable guy. Uh, he gets a lot of stick from from some people. You know, uh, you know who I'm talking about. Um, they call him all sorts of names, but he's a very he's a very good businessman. He knows what he's doing. Uh, he doesn't drink. He's very knowledgeable. And if you go into his stream, he can give you a lot of information. I'm going to advertise his stream uh, when I interview him on on, on Sunday. And um, yeah, I mean, what else can I say? Uh, right. Keith Johnson, uh, been to Patty six times, love your stories and advice. Okay, thank you, Keith, appreciate that. Um, Mark, no, it's not a ladyboy site. Right, um, yeah, there you go. Look, uh, Darcy says, Warren, Warren, you were talking to the guy who asked the question. Uh, I've been with uh, Warren Gerds, again, I pronounced that wrongly. Uh, Warren Gerds has been with his ladyboy partner for years. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, you've done better than me, Capio. You said, 
Hey, boo hoo, cheers. I haven't had a drink in six weeks, but very tempted for the for the boxing tomorrow. Right, Cappy, if you were around last Friday, you probably weren't around on the Friday. I know you were around on the Sunday, but I said I was going to give up for six weeks before I go to Thailand. But the problem is I'm in a toxic relationship at the moment with my wife. We are friends, but we are arguing a lot. You know, we're splitting up. I'm trying to sell the house, move out to Thailand full time. It's not a great um, situation to try and do something that's difficult. I actually stopped drinking for 14 months. A lot of people on the stream have told about this before. And uh, I, I gave up for 14 months. And then I decided to drink again because I didn't give up, give up for life. I do enjoy a drink. Uh, but it's just I told everybody I'm going to give up for six weeks, go on a diet. I can't. I just I fell down at the first hurdle. It's just difficult now because, um, like I say, I'm in a toxic environment at the moment. Uh, and, and I'll be honest with you, when I have a beer, it does relax me and it makes me forget all the crap that's going on around me. Um, Uh, Keith Johnson, if they have a <laughs> right, Keith says, if they have a size 13 pump, deep voice, and a thicker beard, just saying, yeah, I know, all right. You know, I've said it many times before, I'll say it again. You know, a lot of a lot of guys, uh, you know, that I know people who go with lady boys when they're in Thailand, but they're not they're not into that sort of thing in their own countries, they're not gay, they're not into guys, they're not into lady boys, not into anything except females, and I've said to them. I said, you know, I'm not judging you, but I'm surprised because when you go to Thailand, you know, you take lady boys, you take girls, and, and they turn around and they say, it's just something I do when I go to Thailand. You know, when I leave time, I forget all about it. And I mean, who am I to judge? You know, I mean, fair enough. Right, John Paul. Uh, hi, Peter. Have you seen that new Hollywood movie, 13 Lives, about the Thai boys trapped in the cave a few years back? I haven't watched it yet. I've got these free mu movie apps. Okay, I've got Netflix, obviously. I've got YouTube premium. I pay for uh, YouTube because I watch a lot of YouTube and I hate the adverts. You know, it's like 30 seconds. Then you get a five second one. So I pay about £12 a month, 11 99 to have YouTube premium. I am going to answer your question. I'm just getting around to it. Uh, so I've got Netflix. I've got YouTube premium. But I've got a couple of very good free movie channels. I've got Screamio. I've got one called Cinema. And you get to see movies when they're released. Some of them work. Some of them don't work. I've just watched, funny enough, my two daughters have gone to the cinema tonight to watch a new Elvis movie, the biography of Elvis. And I watched it last night on my 65 inch TV in the lounge, you know, but they've gone to the cinema. Um, I haven't watched these movies. There's actually two movies. Apparently one of them is not that great. And one of them is very, very good. I think the 13 lives is, is the better one of the two. Um, and, and I will watch them, but I know it's about Thailand, but the reason I haven't watched them when I came across them, I thought to myself, I don't really want to sit through an hour and a half, two hours, however long it is, and just, I know the story about the cave and the, the 13 boys and that, but it's not really my sort of movie. I, I know it's Thailand and it's it's happening, but I, I don't really, I don't think I'd be entertained by it too much, to be honest with you. And I think that's why I haven't watched it. Um, all right, I haven't watched that. Paul Shackle says, there is a good movie on Netflix about, a, yeah, I've seen that. I've seen it. It's a brilliant movie. Uh, there's a couple of movies, actually. Um, what is the name of it, Paul? There's a good movie on Netflix about a German teenager who falls for a lady boy, but it isn't quite as simple as that, is it? I've watched that, and it is very, very good. So what it is is a German family go out to uh, a resort in Thailand. It's either Pattaya or Phuket, somewhere like that. They don't get the right hotel. Um, but the guy who you're talking about, the boy falls for a girl. He thinks it's a girl. He spends a lot of time with her, and uh, eventually uh, it's discovered that she is a lady boy. And his parents are a bit shocked. And to cut the, my story down, in the end, he says that he wants to stay with this lady boy because uh, go go off. I, I can't remember the name of it. And there's another one as well called uh, Sugar Sugar. There's a, about a bodybuilder in Norway, somewhere like that. He goes to Patty and he meets some. There's a lot, there's a lot of different movies out there. You got to search them out. But the one on Netflix, I do know that, and it is quite a nice film. I might watch it again tomorrow actually, but I can't remember the name of it. Uh, Al Bomb, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Brian, I'm 33, so I guess I'm one of the young guys. Yep, Brian, you are. Uh... Right, Darcy says, anyone who likes lady boys, go to check-in bar if you're in Bangkok. It has the best-looking lady boys. Yeah, Thomas Wright says, hi, Peter. We had a lady boy server at our hotel and jumped in. Very nice young girl. Or young boy yeah I mean you know uh, a lot of them like the girls are you know they're working in the entertainment uh, 
areas, but there are a lot of lady boys who hold down regular jobs. You know, they, they don't want to be passed around like a ball, if that makes sense uh, for YouTube. Um, James, again, is Thailand a place you can go all year round and have a decent time? No, no, you can. You can go. The only thing I'd say, uh, they do have they have two seasons. Some people will argue that there's three seasons. There's actually two. You've got um, the rainy season. You don't really want to be there in the rainy season. That's kind of um, April to July sort of time. Uh, the best time to be in Thailand really is kind of November, December and January because it, it cools down. But as far as action, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, any month of the year. Um, right. The Wutong Live. Have short time and long prices gone down since tourism down? Or has it? It's, it's Thailand. They've gone up because they've got this different way of thinking. Like I said to you, they don't think, well, business is bad. We better let, lower our prices. They think business is bad. We better put our prices up to get the money back that we've lost. It's crazy. Uh, yeah, okay. A lot of people saying good night. I'm nearly done as well, guys. Two and a half hours. Uh, a couple more comments. Uh, Capio, uh, I was at the first fight and I thought uh, Yusuf would win. I still think he will be. An, uh, okay. Well, uh, you've got to keep your eyes, Capio, Sunday, 4.30. Keep your eyes wide open because we're going to have a few uh, naughty people in the guest. Mark him up. Uh, Peter, what will be the biggest temptation for you in Thailand? Bar girls or alcohol? Well, no, alcohol doesn't tempt me, Paul, because it's available, isn't it? Look, as I'm drinking my whiskey, I will say to you, uh, Mark, you probably think I'm a total alcoholic and all I do is drink. We've, we've watched people on streams who do nothing but get pissed, okay, and I'm not one of them. I don't drink uh, whiskey every day of the week. I have a couple of beers every day because I enjoy it. You know, I don't want to be a priest. Um, so I won't. It's not a temptation. You know, 7-Eleven sells a great whiskey called uh, Blend. It's cheap. It's about a £10 for a litre. Um, so it's there if I want it. You know, I'm not living in a country where I've got to duck and dive and sneak around and get a bottle and a brown bag and run back to my hotel. It's not like that. It's available like it is in the UK. Um, as far as girls go, I'm not really... Um, let me just read your comment again. Please, what will be the competition for you? Time and bar girls or girls? I'll go... I'm, I'm not you. I know you're not going to believe this, okay? Uh, and I don't blame you because it sounds like bullshit. But I'm really not into the Thai bar girls as far as bar finding, okay? I like going to their bar. I like the company. They're great fun, playing the games and all the rest of it. Um, I, I don't know. Let me get out there. Let me see what happens. I'm going to go through an emotional roller coaster ride because I've been with a family for 33 years. I'm going to be single. Let me see how it goes and ask me that question in six months' time, okay? Uh, I hope you're still watching the streams in six months' time, Paul. Um, I called you Paul there, mark him up. Right, Capio, thir 13 Lives is on Amazon Prime. It's very good, amazing what they did, really. Uh, what Elton Musk said about those cave divers is outrageous. I don't know. I'll have to look that up. Okay. Uh, I said I'm not going to talk about ladyboys anymore. Right, Hard Tulip. The English boy, another hideaway bar in Patio, was in a relationship with a lady boy that he works uh, in 2020. Nice girl, very, uh, yeah. I mean, you know, you can't you can't prejudge everybody. You know, you, you, people have got this uh, misconception that all lady boys are camp, uh, you know, and loud, and most of them are, to be honest with you, but they're not all. Right, William, uh, nice to have you in the stream, William Sullivan. Like always, say the crocodile Dundee technique is the best way to find out. Yeah, that, that, I remember that from the 80s because I'm an old guy. Uh, I do remember the scene you're talking about. Very good. Uh, Capio again. Uh, I just tried to Google Germany Ladyboy movie. That was a mistake. All right. Um, if, any, look, if anybody out there, I'm going to clock off soon because I've been gone for two and a half hours. I've got to take my daughter to work. If anybody knows the name of the movie on Netflix, which is about the German boy, not man, boy, who met the ladyboy who thought it was a girl, can you... Can you let us know? Because there'll be a lot of people on here. I'm signing off soon. There'll be a lot of people who don't need to go to bed yet and they want to go off and watch it. Because even I don't I, I don't remember it, okay? Uh, don't pay for YouTube Premium. Just get an... Uh, this is Mark. Don't pay for YouTube Premium. Just get an ad block. It's free, but you can give a donation if you want. Uh, I don't know if ad blockers work. Do they work, Mark? They obviously do. Um Right, no logs. Not interested in the lady boys, but there are times I've seen uh, but sorry, who thought I thought a woman and offered a bar fire and they literally show me they were lady boys. You don't get upset. Yeah, well, oh, he's back again. Look. Uh, right. Uh, 
Okay. I can't, pro I'll be honest with you, I can't pronounce that name. Uh, just a talking comment. Been watching from East Coast, Australia, 7.30 a.m. here. Always try to watch Peter Lover's story. Uh, I've got six, let me try, Tar Calypse, is it? Tar Tario Calypse, maybe. Um, I've got six stories going to be released in the morning. I did say I was going to release them right after the live streams, but then I'll be a once a week, um, Peter, once a week. So I'm doing the Friday stream and Sunday stream and also I'll release stories tomorrow. Six stories tomorrow. You're gonna, you, that you, I hope you enjoy them. Um, uh, Mark, Mark, again, if you were if you were to date in Thailand, what would be your age range? You've got that's a good question, Mark. You've got to be really sensible, haven't you? Think about this, right? If you're 60 and you met a 20 year, two year old, I've got a daughter who's 24, 22, two of them. Um, if you met a girl who was 22 and you wanted to go back to your hotel and play connect four with her for one night and then that was it then no problem but you how can you have a relationship with a, a girl you're 60 the girl's 22 or 25 or even 28 something like that what are you going to talk about she's going to be interested in k-pop and all them sort of things that young girls are going to be uh interested in you're going to be interested in um you know what old guys are interested in, in answer to your question I i'm not looking to date when i'm in thailand but i would say Oh, absolute minimum, I'd say 36, 38. I mean, what's the point otherwise? Hey, Passamo, good to have you in. Ad blockers hurt the content creators as well for monetized videos because they lose revenue. YouTube Premium gives a cut to creators based on view time. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point. I didn't realize that. Yeah, because a lot of, because there are a lot of people who've got um, the uh, YouTube Premier. So we don't get revenue from those little adverts coming in. So they give us a cut from that. But I didn't realize ad blockers hurt the content creators. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's a good point. Right. Um, yeah. Simon Simon says, Bangkok chick boys, Alan Partridge. Oh, yeah, that was brilliant, was it? I mean, I was a big fan of Alan Partridge. I mean, he was such a corny, incredibly rude. Um, what's the word you can say? If you're not English and you don't know it, look it up. Alan Partridge. So funny. He lived in a travel lodge on a motorway. But... He always had these fantasies, didn't he? You know, uh, yeah, Bangkok chick boy. Um, yeah, Terry says, uh, hi, Peter. I watch all the videos, but I love the car crashes. Um, some people complain about the car crash videos because when you, what he means by car crashes, it ends in disaster. The Nat and Dave cartoon, you know what I'm talking about, right? But the thing is, um, I, I can't plan what the ending of a story is going to be because they're not my stories. I'm not a guy who sits on a computer and makes up stories. And I think, okay, this week I'm going to have a story where they, they're in hand in hand and they go off into the sunset and they have 20 kids. You know, I can only read what I'm sent in and some of them are car crash stories. Uh, and a lot of guys all write to me and say, I don't like the car crash stories. I like the happy endings. Uh, forgive the pun. But I read out what is, whatever's sent in. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, Thai girls think they're old. Well, look, it, have a look in the description of this video. If you haven't seen, I, I'm not I'm not promoting a video. I'm really not. It's such a good, it's my best seller ever. When I say best seller, uh, it's one of the most top videos I've ever put out there. In the description, there's a link, okay, to a video called um, Patty Thailand, a bar girl story, okay, about a bar girl called Lek who lays it all out her whole life. What happened? She's married now. She's actually in the UK. She could be around the corner. Uh, um, but she actually said, you know, she said, when you get to 30 in Thailand, you know, uh, Thai guys aren't in, interested in us. They, they just don't want to know because we're considered old, you know. So our only chance is to meet a foreigner to, to marry. And uh, if you haven't watched it, it's, it's had 32,000 viewings in seven days. It's one of the best videos I've ever, I've ever put out there. Uh, there's a link in the description. I keep saying that. It's such a good story. Um, Okay, Mark again. Uh, Mark, Mark, my advice is to chat with them first online. That is what I did. Had all the ladies before I led, landed. Depends on what you want. Uh, I, I can't do that, Mark. Well, I say I can't. I, it's not something I would get. I'm not saying you're wrong, but it's not something I would want to do uh, for the simple reason I, I'm a face-to-face -face guy. I'm old school. I don't want to meet people online and then suddenly there they are. Here I am. There they are. And the picture was 20 years old. I'm not like that. I like to meet somebody naturally, get talking to them, if I don't like them, then I'll end the conversation. If I do like them, then I'll continue. Uh, my friend said to me, when you get to Thailand as a single man, why don't you start using all these apps? 
and uh, i'm not particularly looking but if i did um you know really guys it's not it's not for me i'm not one of those kind of app people um okay right capio again is a green spanner coming up now capio you should be there now uh Coho, you need to make sure the bell is for all no, no okay good advice there right okay paul shackleton said uh, Lex's story was amazing. I must listen. It's really weird, Paul, because what it is, I, you know, obviously I read out that story. And I tried to make it a little bit interesting. I put pictures that match the story for the first 80% of it. You know, I'd say, and when we arrived in Pattaya by bus and the picture changed to a bus with Pattaya Bangkok on it. And, uh, you know, I'm reading the story, but, I, you know, I finished it. And about two days later, I thought, I'll check it out. And I was walking my dog, Benji, and uh, Benji the Beagle. And, um, I was listening to Lex's story, you know, and but it was me telling it, but it's not like it's me listening. It's not like it's me reading it. So I'm listening to the story, but I'm actually listening to the story, and I forget it's actually – of course, I recognize my own voice. This sounds confusing now, but I've told the story on the upload, but I'm listening to it, but I'm not really registering that it's me telling it. I'm listening to the story thinking, wow, you know, and God, oh, why did that happen? You know, really weird. Um, right, Craig says, uh, yeah, I like Thailand drinking and girls – but hearing about the bar goes all the time gets a bit tiring. Um, well, that's where the story's come in, Craig, isn't it? But, you know, on the stream, look, if it's your first time here, Craig, I don't know if you've been in here before. My format on the streams is generally saying hello to everybody at the beginning. I'll do a bit of serious news stuff, and then I'll do a competition. And the the, the, the latter part of it, so if it's a two-hour one, the first hour is serious. The second hour, it's all mongering, girls, lady boys, all that sort of thing. And by then, anybody who's not interested will uh, go off. Like now there's 300, I've got 348, the number, and there was 400. So there's 100 people less than, you know, an hour ago. Uh, some people are sleeping, but, you know, anything goes. Okay. Uh, Mark Hanley. Uh, chats online when they meet him, they go to the toilet and go, oh, oh. <laughs> too much information there. Yeah, Richard, uh, Willie, you say that story is a real tearjerker, but it's really weird because I agree with you. It was a real tear, even I had a tear in my eye, I'll be honest with you. But the thing is, it was a happy ending, forgive the pun again. I mean, it actually ended really well, but just what, the way she describes the story, I might listen to it again tomorrow when I'm walking Benji in the morning. Um, but the way she describes it is a bit of a tearjerker, uh, story. Not because it's – is it sad? No, it's not sad, but it ended well, but it's just it's just a great story. Go and watch it if you haven't seen it. Um, okay. Uh, sorry, Maze. Uh, best place to find a genuine Thai girlfriend to chat with is Thai Cupid. Thai friendly, good. Yeah, but, you, it, yeah, absolutely. It's a minefield. Obviously, I haven't been on it, but I've spoken to a lot of people who have been on it. Um, and, and, you know, working girls use it. They use all the dating apps, and, and, and they're um, – they're very good at what they do. So don't think if you've got a dating app, you're guaranteed a, you know, a, a lovely, honest girl. Uh, Capio, 100 gone, looking for a lady boy. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Right, um, Matthew, I always pick up, I don't know why I always pick up a whiskey when I read your comment, Matthew. No, I, I've got to check my daughter tomorrow, Matthew. I don't, you know, I like to end a good stream, you know, in a nice way. I don't want, I don't want to be known as like, you know, Peter, the guy who gets pissed up when he's had, uh, when he's done three hours, because I, I, there was a couple of guys who used to do streams. There was an Irish guy. Uh, he's got another channel now, but he used to do five hour streams. He used to get really, really pissed. And you'd look at him. He had his shirt open, you know, and he'd be talking about crap. And five hours later, he's he like, Jesus, get a life. You know, I don't want to be like him. Right. Um, Jamie MC. Hi, Peter. Great stream as always. As a 50 year old time visit in Thailand soon, do you recommend uh, bypassing Bangkok, Patty, and heading? Just to hoard. No, I don't. James, if you haven't been to Thailand before, what I would recommend to you is this. Uh, definitely go into, uh, do your research, right? But what you want to do is you, you need to spend a few days. I don't know how long, how long you're going for. I've been close to uh, video, right? Uh, I have to guess how long you're going for. I hope it's not just two weeks. But if you're going for a month, what I would say is spend a week, five days in Bangkok. Uh, you, all the videos are out there. You know, go and have a look at Nana, Cowboy, maybe Pat Pong. Have a look around, go to a few malls and get an idea what it's about, okay? You've got to go to Pattaya for a week, definitely. Go to Pattaya. After you've done that, after you've done Bangkok, you've done Pattaya for a week, start exploring. Go to Hua Hin, Rayong, uh, Cha'am. Have a look around. 
but you've got to do all those places. Uh, if you just go straight to Hua Hin, you're missing out because, you, you know, Bangkok has got so much to offer. Patty has got so much to offer. Hua Hin at the moment is my favorite place. I'll go straight there because I know what, what's there. But if you've not been there before, I definitely recommend Bangkok, Pattaya, then maybe migrate over to Hua Hin. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't notice that before, Cabby. You said Hua Hin is my favorite place, but you could see it all in about four days. Yeah, but I don't know how old you are, Capio. But the thing is, I'm assuming that you've spent a long time in Thailand like I have. I've spent over three decades living there uh, and visiting. And the thing is, I lived I lived for three years in Pattaya. I lived for years in Bangkok. I lived in uh, the Omni Tower. I lived on Soy 22. I lived on Soy 24. I lived on Soy 38. And, um, you know, it gets a bit old hat, doesn't it? You know, Pattaya, when you first arrive there, screaming girls, party town, I've died, I've gone to heaven. It, it gets it gets boring. It does, you know. And when you go down to Hua Hin, there's enough there to keep you entertained, but it's not in your face, is it? You know what I mean? If you, if you, Capio, if you, if you like Hua Hin, you, you'll understand exactly what I mean. Right, no logs, uh, no logs again. Uh, that Irish lad, I think he went on the run. He was in the... <laughs> Who is this? He, he was in Dubai and went to Thailand on the run, on the run, from Ireland too. No need to comment on this, but I'm sure he was arrested in Dublin. I don't mind commenting. I don't know who he is. What did he do? Um, people think they can run away to Thailand and it's safe. They're in Pattaya. They'll never get caught. The systems are good in Thailand. The police, are, they, they know what they're doing. Uh, what are you saying there, Mark? In life, no matter what you do, what it doesn't matter what you do, where you go, decide what you're looking for. Don't let circumstances dictate the moment. Mark, people have said to me, Peter, you're 62. What the hell are you going to live full time in Thailand? Get a flat in England and go out on holiday as often as you can. No, I don't want to do that. You know, I, I don't have a life here. You know, I'm dead. I'm in the coffin already. You know, I want to get on a plane and go to Thailand because it breathes new life into me. You know, if I get another 10 years out of it in Thailand, then I'll come back to the UK. I'll sit and watch Heartbeat every afternoon if it's still on with my cup of tea and my rich tea biscuits and my furry slippers, okay? But there's at least 10 years before that. Uh, Yours Travel said, Hua Hin, not on my hit list. Uh, may maybe you should visit it, Yours. You might enjoy it. Um, Dino J, once you once you go to Bangkok and Pattaya, you will be hooked. It's a must to see. Some guys don't even bother with uh, Bangkok. What they do, they, they land. Uh, you know, the uh, airport now, it's about halfway to Pattaya. In the old days, we used to fly into the old Dong Wong Airport. Uh, thank you, Jeff. Appreciate that, mate. Uh, we used to fly into the old Dong Wong Airport. Uh, and then you kind of basically, when you come into town, you're in the middle of ba uh, Bangkok. And it was a two-hour drive down to Pattaya. But now the, I say the new airport. I can't pronounce I keep saying the new airport because I can't I can't pronounce it. Subani. You know the one I mean, right? That's, uh, that's about, and it's not because I've had a beer. I've never been able to pronounce it. I'm really bad at pronouncing Thai names. You know, I can speak some Thai. But I'm really bad at pronouncing these uh, things. Um, it's about not half, but it's getting on the way to Pattaya. And a lot of guys, they fly in, they land in, in the airport, and then they go straight to Pattaya. They have their holiday vacation, and then they'll come back to the airport and go back to their own countries. You know, fair enough. If they want to do that, it's up to them. Um, Gemini Star says, Franco has gone for a cup of tea. Yeah, he's not working this weekend. What's happening? What have I missed? Uh, we must have a troll in and Frank might have missed it because uh... Capio's helping me out on Sunday because, look, I keep saying this. I'm going to advertise it again. Sunday, my regular stream is at 8 p.m. on Sunday. That's just, you know, we're going to do the normal stuff we do. And uh, But I've got Brian Flowers, who's he's a friend of mine now. He's coming on the show. The show. He's coming on the stream at 4.30 p.m. on Sunday. We're going to be talking big time about trolls, armchair critics, idiots mental cases all that sort of thing and uh because brian loves all that he knows how to handle it more than me and um somebody said to me a while ago i wasn't going to say this but i'll say it now uh mark i just want to say thank you to that mark um somebody made some kind of like piss take videos about me and they said to me uh peter why don't you take your revenge and do the same uh, and do make a couple of videos about him i i honestly think the guys um, i think he's got a mental disorder that's why and my parents taught me uh, from a young age, you, you don't kick a sick animal. And that, that's why I haven't made any videos about him. Right. But Sunday, Capio, uh, it'll be good to have you in the stream. It'll be good to have you with the old spanner. Right. Uh, bend over. Uh, Hua Hin and Chat Arm, uh, great and relaxing. Well, Chat Arm is actually very, very quiet. But it's great if you've got a nice uh, girl you've met 
and you want to spend some quality time, nice beach town with some good restaurants, then I would definitely uh, recommend Cha'am. Uh, Capio, it's okay. A misunderstanding comment was fine. Just misunderstood. Okay. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mark. I don't know if I... I did put your, your uh, super chat up there, but I didn't want to forget what I was talking about, so I kind of skipped it really quick, but thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll get some beers with that. I'll have a cheers to you, okay? I'll do it now. Look. Cheers. Somebody left a comment on another on a on somebody else's stream. I can't remember it, whose it was, but they said, uh, "Oh yeah, I like watching Thailand Bam because it starts off all sensible, and the more he has to drink, the more crazy it gets." But I'm trying to be sensible now. Um, um, what's that? Bernie says, uh, "Try this, Peter Savan Na Boom Me." Is that how you say it? Is it? I can't write it down. Can I take a? I'll take a screenshot and do it afterwards. Savannah Bumi. Yeah, it sounds kind of right. It doesn't sound quite right though. Savan, Savannah Boom, Savannah Bumi. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll have a look at that tomorrow. Thanks for that, Bernie. I do appreciate it. Uh, Deep the trucker. Uh, I've never been to Bangkok. Only Patia, but I'm not interested in climbing stairs to the BTS and struggling to the crossroad. Uh, they've got escalators now, Deep. You should visit uh, Bangkok. It's got a lot to offer. Um, okay. Um, people are telling me how to say it now. This is good, right? Uh, Capio Sawana Pum. That that right? That does sound. That does sound how you say it. Hang on, Sa. I'm writing it down now. How much you charge for uh, Thai lessons, Capio? I've actually got a Thai teacher. She's a lovely girl. Taught me a few things. Right, Sawana Pum. Yeah, I, I, excellent. That's it. I can say it. So the next time you land at Sawanapum Airport, there you go. Right, Matthew Cartwright. Uh, water the daisies, have another whiskey, and let's get the party started. No, I'm nearly there. Christ, it's three hours already. Another 10 minutes, Matthew. Oh, he's back again. Hang on. You know, when I say he's back again, this guy who leaves these nude HD XY date inside, it's actually a bot. It's a piece of machinery that does it automatically. It keeps changing its username. It's very, very clever. It's not a guy, uh, but I do have to block it. Again, James, I've got a video on the channel. It's called uh, it's called something like meeting a nice Thai girl. All right, what? Okay, let me try and do it. Right, uh, let me try and advise you, James. What's your advice on maybe trying to meet a genuine Thai girl? What I would say is this: Don't go into a go go bar. Sit down with a Thai girl, bar, uh, bar girl, buy a drink. Listen to her bullshit and then try to date her because it won't work. Same with a beer bar. Some girl, some guys have made that work, but it's not really the way to do it. Uh, what I'd say to you, if you want to meet a nice girl, you're a young guy. You're a young guy. What I would say, there's a lot of nice Thai girls who hang out in Carlson Road because they actually want to meet Westing guys, not because they're making money. Some of them have got, a, you know, they come from very good families. But, you know, you, you think about it, right? You see an Asian girl walking down the street and think, wow, Asian girl, beautiful, right? They're the same as we are, you know. So if you're a young guy and you go to Carlson Road, you'll see a lot of younger Thai girls. When I say younger, your sort of age, and they'll want to get to know you, you know, because they're they're normal everyday Thai girls. They go to a party in Carlson Road because they want to meet some Western guys, not because of work or anything like that. They just, you know, wow, Western guy, he's handsome, that sort of thing, right? Or uh, okay, shopping malls, Seven Eleven, restaurants, noodle cart, anywhere, anywhere but beer bars. Gogo bars, and definitely don't try to pick up a girlfriend in Patia. I mean it. Not even jumped in, okay? Oh, God, he's back again. Hang on. That is back again. Good bit of software he's using. Um, okay, guys, I am I think that's it. I'm done. It's been a good stream tonight. We're nearly three hours. I said to myself before I started, I said, right, two hours maximum tonight because uh, I've got to take my daughter to work. Uh, oh, look, I'm advertising nude HD XYZ. Let's all shoot over there, right, guys? I'll just say a few things before I leave. Uh, what I'll say first, I'll say cheers. I'll say I hope to see you, Cappy, on Sunday, taking care of the uh, the naughty people out there. Right, it's official now. Sunday, four thirty p.m. Brian Flowers is my guest. We'll have an hour, hour and a half. We're going to be talking about all the maniacs out there. Uh, I'll be back for my regular stream 8 p.m. on Sunday. Tomorrow morning, the six stories, I'll release them before lunchtime. I don't know exactly what time, maybe about 10.30, something like that. Um, 
And that's really it. Nothing else to say. Guys, thanks for coming into the stream tonight. Uh, I'll see you on Sunday. I uh, hope you enjoy the stories tomorrow. But for now, that's it. Good night, guys.